Good morning all. Welcome to session 3. Today we are going to discuss a uh, lot of very very important things. Okay. So, <coughs> firstly we will start with uh, Gandhi and era. So, Gandhi as you all know like what all he did in South Africa, Indian opinion newspaper, Tolstoy form, Phoenix form and then uh, Indian ambulance score during the war wars. So, 1901 Gandhi came back to India. So, he used to come very often. So, it is his country, no? So, <laughs> it's not like Gandhi came in 1915 only. So, Gandhi came to India with the intention of settling down in India. He attended the Calcutta session. Presided by D. Vacha. Calcutta session presided by D. Vacha. Dean Shah Idol G. Vacha. He is one of the founding members of INC. One of the founding members of INC. And uh, did I tell you that uh, INC had a plan uh, to organize a session in uh, London? No, sir. Yes, sir, no. no sir. Right on. In 1892, <coughs> sorry, it will go and chronologically, 1889. Right on. In the year 1889, British Committee of INC was established. British Committee of INC was established. 1891, 1891. This committee started. This committee started. The weekly journal called as India. Weekly journal called as India. In eighteen ninety two, in eighteen ninety two. INC session was scheduled to be held in London. INC session was scheduled to be held in London, but was cancelled due to but was cancelled due to general elections in England. But was cancelled due to general elections in England. Fine. So, I will give you one small um, question. Consider the following statements. Consider the following statements. Do not write down, just listen. Statement 1 Tilak strongly condemned. Tilak strongly condemned the practice of untouchability during his HRL. They like strongly condemn the practice of untouchability during his HRL. Second statement, in 1917, 1917, Tilak refused to sign the petition, refused to sign the petition demanding the abolition of untouchability. Third statement, Tilak was against the practice of child marriage. Tilak was against the practice of child marriage. And he published numerous articles in his newspapers, Kesari and Maharata, to create awareness against the practice. Fourth statement, in 1891, Tilak opposed age of consent bill, which sought to increase the marriageable age of girls to 12 years. 
So, many of the following statements are correct. First one, condemn the practice of untouchability. Second one, refuse to sign the bill on untouchability. Third one, oppose child marriage. Fourth one, oppose age of consent bill, which proposed to increase the marriageable age. I mean, broad intent was to prevent the child marriages. So, out of these four statements, how many of them are correct? See, these kind of questions are expected this year because no elimination will work here. I came across some videos on YouTube. I just laughed at it. I know the logic you are using. Logic you are using, I will tell you. Out of them, one of them has to be correct because they are contradictory in nature. Listen, the famous YouTube elimination techniques. Yes. Out of these two, one of them has to be correct. And UPSC, no. They will give you, they will give you options like this only. 1, 3, 2, 4. Understood? 1, 3, 4 or All, right on. Only one is correct. Oh my God. <laughs> no option only. <laughs> what will you do? Hmm? Right on. In 1917, Tilak refused to sign. Tilak refused to sign. The petition demanding the abolition of untouchability. Tilak refused to sign. <coughs> petition demanding abolition of untouchability. 1917. Year doesn't matter, but he refused to sign the petition. Next one. In 1891, Tilak, Tilak <coughs> opposed the age of consent bill, age of consent bill and this age of consent bill was a outcome of Rakma Bai case, it was outcome of Rakma Bai case and I have told you KT Telang and also Behramji Malbari associated with the case. Fine. And now Tilak also got associated indirectly. They wanted the marriageable age of the child, girl child to be increased. Tilak opposed it. Why? The main reason was Tilak did not like Britishers interfering in the Indians traditions. Any change in India with regard to our religions and customs and rituals, we will bring it from ourselves. Let the change originate from within the society. We do not want anyone to interfere in our religious practices. Because whenever Britishers interfere, they will have an evil or an hidden agenda. That will not help us. Fine. So, that will create a lot of side effects. They might have evil agendas. So, therefore, Tilak was like any changes. Yes, child marriage is a problem. Yes, untouchability is a problem. But we will reform ourselves. You do not do anything to change us. You just support us externally. But these kind of policies are not needed. And even today, the practice of untouchability exists. Despite being, I mean, despite Article 17 being in the constitution since its inception. Why? Because any change in the society to be effective, it should come from within the society. It should come to the hearts and minds of our citizens that we should not practice untouchability until and unless any laws, see dowry. Law is there, but is it stopped? No. Fine. So, law will be ineffective if there is no change from within the society. Okay. So, that is the main thing. And uh, right on. 
Tilak established. Tilak established. Deccan Education Society. Deccan Education Society. In 1884, 1884, along with Ranade, Chiplankar, Gopal Ganesh Agarkar, Ranade, Chiplankar, Gopal Ganesh Agarkar, and left in 1890, and left it in 1890, 1890. Differences again. Left it in 1890. Next line. Gokhale, Gokhale, and Dando Keshav Karve. Do you know this person? Yes. SNDT Women's University, 1916, first ever women's university in India. The main founder, Dando Keshav Karve. Gokhale and Dando Keshav Karve worked as teachers in DES, worked as teachers. Okay. <coughs> and about Bipin Chandrapal, right on one very important thing. He was a moderate till 20th century. Bipin Chandrapal, moderate till 20th century. Edited the newspapers, New India and Tribune. Edited the newspapers, New India and Tribune. Followed Brahmoism. Followed Brahmoism. Next one. Advocated. Advocated. Vidori marriage. And married a widow. He also advocated 48 hours of work per week, 48 hours of work per week and a living wage for labors. Living wage, minimum wage. Okay. Right on about a few points about Lala Rajpatrai. Lala Rajpatrai. Founding members of Punjab National Bank. Founding members of Punjab National Bank. Organized Indian HRL in America in 1917, PNB, he was one of the founding member. Organized Indian HRL in USA in 1917, in 1921 he started Servants of People Society, in 1921 he started Servants of People Society. Next one, 1920, special session of INC at Calcutta, 1920, special session of INC at Calcutta was presided by him. <coughs> he was closely associated with, next point, closely associated with
the Anglo vernacular school of Arya Samaj. Anglo vernacular schools of school of Arya Samaj. Even today you find no DAV schools, Dayan and Anglo vernacular schools. So Lalachpatrai was an advocate of Anglo vernacular education. See in Arya Samaj there were two groups. One group advocated Gurukul methods, another group advocated Anglo vernacular schoolings. So Lalaj Patra sided with Anglo vernacular schooling group. Okay? And then uh, right on. One group told Gurukul method of education, traditional method of education. We will proceed with traditional method of education. Another group told traditional method is not valid anymore. We have to adopt to the times. We will provide modern western education along with vernacular language. So Gurukul is different. This is different. Okay? So, forgot. The point came to my mind. I forgot. Uh, what is it? Just a minute. Right on. He was a member of Responsivist faction. He was a member of responsivist faction. Faction means group of Swarajas. Responsivist faction of Swarajas and advocated cooperation with British to protect Hindu interests. Advocated cooperation with British to protect Hindu interests. Okay. Next point. He also advocated, he also advocated right to education of Shudras. He also advocated right to education of Shudras. Fine. So it literally works and all. It is in PYQ only. You can know like what all autobiographies you wrote, I mean biographies he wrote, Mazani, Garibaldi, Shivaji. So that is there in PYQ only. I read on few points about Ghosh, Arabindo Ghosh. <coughs> Again, uh, we resigned from ICS. We resigned from ICS. wrote series of articles, wrote series of articles new lamps for the world, new lamps for the old in the newspaper Indu Prakash Criticizing the moderate methods. Criticizing the moderate methods. <coughs> okay. So he published the weekly newspaper, Vande Mataram. Vande Mataram. And also, Karma Yogi, Karma Yogi in English, Karma Yogi in English. Fine. 
and then write down a few points about uh, Ajit Singh. Ajit Singh. Started Pagadi Sambala Jatta campaign. Pagadi Sambala Jatta campaign to propagate self respect. To propagate self respect. Come on. Create awareness against exploitation. Create awareness against exploitation among six. He formed, formed Anjumani Vatan or Bharat Mata Society. What? Anjumani Vatan. Bharat Mata Society. So he got himself exiled to Germany. Okay. He went to Germany and spent the rest of his life there. Bhagat Singh was his nephew. Okay. And then uh, write about Sarojini Naidu. Sarojini Naidu. She was called as Indian Eats. There was a great poet in England called as Eats. Indian Eats. Fine. In nineteen zero five. 1905 Golden Threshold she published poems called as Golden Threshold in 1912 1912 Bird of Time she published her work Bird of time. Just like they ask songs from the prison, no? they can ask this, word of times. Okay. And next one, uh, this was a nationalistic, nationalistic collection of poems. Okay. So, this was not some romanticism related poem. So, this was nationalistic. Earlier she wrote, I mean this uh, romanticism kind of works. Okay. That was very prevalent in England. Shelley, Eats and then uh, Woodsworth, they were romantics, romantic poets. So, our early works were romantic in nature, but 1912 she published something that is nationalistic in tone. Okay. Next thing, in 1917, Broken Wings, Broken Wings. So, here she dedicated a poem to Jinnah, Broken Wings, dedicated poems to Jinnah, Ambassador of Hindu Muslim Unity, that tribute. Okay. And then here there was one more poem, uh, The Gift, right now, Gift of India, one more poem called as Gift of India. The poem Gift of India. 
so it highlighted the plight of indian mothers who lost their sons during world war 1 plight of indian mothers and the pain sorrow the situation of indian mothers who lost their sons during the first world war okay and then uh, read on few things about ani besant ani besant she came to india as a part of theosophical society founded by founded by kolla lalcott and madam blavatsky in usc she came to india as a part of theosophical society founded by Kalna Lalcott and Madam Blavatsky in USA. In 1907, next point. She became the president of the Asophical Society. 1907. she became the president of theosophical society it was an international organization theosophical society man in 1917 first women to preside inc first women to preside inc and also in 1917 along with margaret cousins along with margaret cousins she formed women's india association women's india association and demanded demanded voting rights for indian women demanded the voting rights for indian women comma also met south boro committee also met south boro committee this committee is re regarding what voting rights not for women just voting rights franchise okay south boro committee in that regard fine she also met south boro committee in that regard fine so okay now coming back to gandhi the gandhi era so 1901 gandhi attended calcutta session presided by d vacha okay presided by d vacha And again 1915 he returned back to india 1916 attended the lucknow session 1917 champaran satyagraha champaran satyagraha what was the problem in champaran you all know teen katiya system In three by twenty acre land, compulsory have to cultivate indigo. So why it was made compulsory? 
No. The reason was nobody was ready to cultivate indigo. Why? Because of low production of indigo. The reason was low production of indigo. Why farmers were not producing indigo? Because of low prices. And it will lead to decline in the fertility of the soil. Low prices and decline in the fertility of the soil, farmers were reluctant. Okay, will not cultivate indigo. Why there was low prices? Because of aniline. Because of aniline. What is aniline? A chemical dye invented by Germans. A chemical dye invented by Germans. So, indigo was the only way to give colors to the clothes, but Germans invented aniline. It was a synthetic dye. Because of the scientific dis discovery, the demand for indigo declined. And when demand declines, what happened to the prices? Prices also declines. And when the prices are low, any farmer will he cultivate the loss making crop? No, he did not want to cultivate. But Britishers, see, this chemical dye was a monopoly of Germans. It was a monopoly of Germans. Britishers did not have this aniline or the formula of aniline. So they wanted indigo. But farmers are not ready to cultivate indigo. Therefore, they made it compulsory for them to cultivate. So this question was asked indirectly. 2020-21 prelims. So why there was decline in the cultivation of indigo towards 20th century? Because of scientific in, I mean, inventions like aniline. There were chemical alternatives or synthetic alternatives available for indigo. Therefore, nobody was ready to cultivate indigo. Fine. So, such kind of applied questions are also possible. Okay. So, Gandhiji went to Champaran and that was his first CDM as well. His first civil disobedience in India. Why? Because the district administration told him not to enter into Champaran. He disobeyed the order by the civilian authority to enter into Champaran. Therefore, it is known as first CDM of Gandhi in India. He entered along with a team of lawyers along with a team of lawyers, Anugraha Narayan Sinha, Acharya Kri, J.B. Kriplani, and then Rajendra Prasad, Brajkishor Prasad, he entered with all of them. Fine. So, there, he understood the situation. And uh, he understood that, not only this uh, Teen Katya is the problem, the people of Champaran are also suffering from illiteracy, backwardness, lack of sanitation, hygiene, lack of unity, etc. Therefore, he tried to give a holistic solution to all those issues. So, he set up a lot of schools with emphasis on adult education so that to provide education to them. Secondly, he emphasized on sanitation and hygiene. That is when he designed this slogan, cleanliness is next to godliness. And then he also created awareness against the system of untouchability, caste-based discrimination, etc. So, he did a lot of good work. And then Champaran Agrarian Committee was set up by the Britishers. Gandhi was made the member of this committee. And this committee recommended two things. First thing, abolition of the Katya system. And those farmers who were exploited by this system, they were supposed to be paid the compensation. So it recommended two things. So this was the first victory of Gandhi in India. Secondly, Ahmedabad mill strike. So, February 1918, February 1918, so what is special about it? Again, this is related to, this is connected to international events. No, 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 listen, World War One. Lot of goods used to flow from England to India. Now Germans started attacking it. So goods from England to India could not reach. So what happens? Trade disrupted. Trade disrupted. So India is not able to receive the British goods. But the demand will remain the same now. So somebody has to fill in the demand. So what happens? In India, 
there was rise of indigenous industries there was rise of indigenous industries remember extremists they had promoted small industries cottage industries village industries now those industries started making lot of profits those capitalists started making lot of profits so this led to expansion of industries expansion of industries and the job opportunities were created so as a result there was lot of rural to urban migration rural to urban migration and usually when the jobless people migrate from rural to urban region where will they settle down they settle down in slums and slums why do you call them as slums lack of sanitation and hygiene so in such situation diseases get spread very easily and there was spread of plague in ahmedabad region people were suffering people started dying the laborers were settled down in this region they were affected now there are two choices so similar to very um, this covid 19 crisis the people who had migrated from rural areas to urban areas they had two choices one to stay here get infected or return back to their roots what did they do crores of them return back to their roots their villages their natives here also labor started migrating labor started migrating back now labor in order to protect their own life they started migrating back but what about the industries they don't have any labor see now look at the situation you are making profits huge demand for your goods no competition from england and you don't know when the war is going to end the moment war ends british goods is going to come back so again you have to face the stiff competition now is the opportunity golden opportunity for you to make as much profit as possible and in such situation the laborers are going back don't you think it will hurt you so to retain the labor what they gave they gave bonus 50 to 75% of their actual wages this bonus was called as plague bonus it was to retain the workers so your salary will become almost double imagine earlier you were getting 150 now you are getting anywhere around 150 to 175 rupees understood so this was to retain the labor but by 1918 by 1918 british goods started coming to india german resistance got declined it started coming to india so our industries they started facing stiff competition profits got declined now what they did they abolished plague bonus the owners abolished the plague bonus when there was no competition they used to give plague bonus now plague is also not there and british goods have also come back stiff competition they abolished plague bonus you are getting 150 rupees salary suddenly you are getting 100 rupees again will it be okay with you no and on top of it on top of it there is severe inflation there is severe inflation because of two reasons one disruption of trade second thing war time taxation whenever british has fought any war no they impose taxes on us because they needed resources to fight the war see when russia ukraine war started only there was shortage of sunflower oil in india there was shortage of wheat flour in india there was inflation imagine a country that is ruling us is directly involved in the first world war so it will affect us very much so our people are suffering due to inflation so 100 rupees salary was grossly insufficient so they went on a strike so their demand was for 50% increase in wages plus plague bonus laborers wanted this but capitalists now they are also not able to make huge profit because british goods have come back so they told so we will give you 20% increase in wages and no plague bonus because plague itself is not there so this was the tussle they wanted 50% but industrialists were ready to give 20% so in such situation anasuya ben sarabhai anasuya ben sarabhai sister of mill owner 
Ambalal Sarabai. Ambalal Sarabai was the father of Vikram Sarabai. Ambalal Sarabai is the father of Vikram Sarabai. Don't ask me who is Vikram Sarabai. <laughs> okay. So she invited Gandhi. She invited Gandhi. Gandhi went. By the time Gandhi went, there was dissensions among the laborers. <coughs> Some group of labor they were ready to cooperate with the industrialist. Some group of labor they were frustrated, they wanted to become violent. They wanted to destroy everything. Some group they had lost the morale, they had lost the confidence. So Gandhi, in order to keep them all together, in order to stop them from becoming violent, he started hunger strike to build a moral pressure on the mill owners and to keep the laborers united and also peaceful. So as a result of his moral pressure, both of them agreed to the compromise of 35% increase in the wages. Again, law of averages. 50 plus 20 divided by 2, 35. Fine. So, Namera. Okay. Understood. So, 35% both of them agreed. The next thing is, I mean this is uh, the first instance of hunger strike of Gandhi in India. First instance of hunger strike of Gandhi in India. <coughs> okay. So next thing is, Keda Satyagraha. Keda Satyagraha, March 1918. Again, this region was affected with alternating flood and drought, alternating flood and drought. And whether it is flood or it is drought, it will ultimately lead to what? Crop loss will ultimately lead to crop loss. In this situation of crop loss, Britishers increased the revenue rate by 23%, sorry 22, increase the rate of revenue by 22%, okay. So Gandhi went there along with Mohan Lal Pandya, Sardar Patel, etc. So this was the first non-cooperation movement of Gandhi in India. Non-cooperation movement because he told the people, he told the people of Keda not to pay taxes and not to cooperate with authorities. not to cooperate with authorities, okay. So this is kind of a tax revolt. So finally, Britishers agreed and there was a provision in the land revenue policy only. So was, what the provision was, it was very simple. See, imagine on an average in your land, you produce 100 kg of rice. Let's assume on an average you produce 100 kg of rice. In any year, in any year, if the production is less than one fourth of average production, in any year, if the production is less than one fourth of the average production, so what, what is one fourth of 100, 100 kg? 25 kg. In any year, if the production is less than 25 kg, you are not supposed to pay any revenue. This was there in the land revenue policy only. Okay. Average production, any year, if the production is less than one fourth of the average production, you are not supposed to pay in the taxes. But Britishers, they violated their own policy and they made it compulsory to pay the taxes. Fine. They violated their own policy. This was there in the land revenue policy only. But they did not even follow that. They told all farmers need to pay the taxes. So now, there was tax revolt organized under the leadership of Gandhi and Patel and as a result, and as a result, Britishers 
the agreed for exemption for the common current year so those who can pay they can pay those who cannot pay need not pay exemption for the current year plus 6% increase applicable from the next cropping season 6% increase applicable from the next cropping season what was the original uh, increase 22% it was reduced to 6% fine current cropping season they told those who can afford to pay can pay exemption from next cropping season 6% increase is applicable okay so this was the case and this is one speciality of gandhi who was the mentor of gandhi to which group he belong to did they bother about peasants and laborers no but now look at gandhi first three movements with peasants and laborers fine that is what differentiates him from the typical moderates fine so he cared about the masses one best suggestion given to him by gokhale was do not join any group until and unless you realize the situation of india so he realized he understood okay moderates also there are a lot of limitations extremists also there are a lot of limitations so i'll have to follow my own path instead of uh, taking others path so that is when he decided okay so next one is raulat satyagraha march and april 1919 raulat satyagraha march and april 1919 okay so what is raulat act just write down just write down few things with an intent to continue with an intent to continue the stringent provisions of the stringent provisions of defense of india act 1915 defense of india act 1915 1915 in bracket which was very critical in suppressing the revolutionary movement in india which was very critical in suppressing the revolutionary movement in india close the bracket they set up sydney rowlett committee there was high court judge sydney rowlett and based on the recommendations of this committee and based on the recommendations of this committee anarchical and revolutionary crimes act anarchical and revolutionary crimes act or or black act anarchical and revolutionary crimes act or black act or rowlett act was enacted Stop. There was a huge scope of misuse. There was a huge scope of misuse. Misusing, sorry, misusing the provisions of this act. <coughs> misusing the provisions of this act. Therefore. Gandhi launched Satyagraha. Gandhi launched Satyagraha 
against it. Gandhi launched Satyagraha against it. Okay. Next line. It was the first instance of. It was the first instance of. Use of his Satyagraha method in India. First instance of use of his Satyagraha method in India. First instance. Will you stop? It was the first All India movement of Gandhi in India. It was the first All India movement of Gandhi. First All India movement of Gandhi. Where he took the help of the organization of HRL. Where he took the help of the organization of HRL. Okay. So, what are the features or provisions of Rollout Act? Briefly write down. First point imprisonment without trial for two years. Imprisonment without trial for two years. Arrest based on suspicion. <coughs> Cannot be represented by a lawyer. Arrest based on suspicion. There need not be any like proof against you. Okay. Arrest based cannot be represented by a lawyer. Cannot be represented by a lawyer. No appeal against the verdict of the special court or tribunal. Against the verdict of special court or tribunal, tribunal. Okay. So, special court was set up to decide the cases of fraud attack and there was no provision of appeal. Next point, severe restrictions on the freedom of press. Severe restrictions on the freedom of press. Next point, admitted evidences that aren't, that are not admissible under Indian Evidences Act 1872. It admitted evidences that are not admissible under Indian Evidences Act 1872. Admitted evidences that are not admissible under Indian Evidences Act. Indian Evidences Act 1872. Okay. See, as per Indian Evidences Act, let's say for example, you are accused of revolutionary activities. You are accused of revolutionary activities. So, you are arrested. When you are taken to court, it is my responsibility to prove that you are a revolutionary. You have guns, you have the material to make bombs, you have some revolutionary material, your friends are revolutionaries. So, it is my responsibility to prove that to the court that you are a revolutionary. It is my responsibility. But in Rowlett Act, I need not provide any evidence. The circumstantial things can be the evidences. Let's say for example, when you go to have some tea in a tea shop. So, let's say you are walking in the street of Old Rajinder Nagar. So, Savarkar passed opposite to you. So, in that moment, where you came in front of each other, they will click a photo. You and Madhalal Dingra having a cup of coffee in the same tea stall. One photo, enough. Circumstantial things are more than enough to establish that you are a revolutionary. You have to prove that you don't know Madhalal Dingra, you don't know Savarkar, you don't know any revolutionary. How to prove? And you are not supposed to be assisted by a lawyer. You have to prove that you are innocent. See, if I know something, I can prove. Yes, I know Rowlett. That guy looks like this. Fine, he used to stay there. His mom's name is this. His father used to work here. I can prove that I know. But how can I prove that I don't know Savarkar? 
Will they accept no as an answer? British? No. And two years of imprisonment without trial? In two years, they can make you accept that you are friend friend of Mangal Pandey also. <laughs> Understood? They can torture you to such an extent that then make you accept you are friend of Mangal Pandey also. All the revolutionaries of India. They'll make you accept that you are part of even Sanyasi revolt also. Fine. So it can happen. So this was the bad thing about the case. So together they called it as right on. Like in simple words, Rowlett Act, no Dalil, no Vakil, no appeal. No Dalil means no complaint, no evidence. No Vakil, you cannot be represented by a lawyer. And no appeal. No appeal. Whatever judgment that is given by the special court, that is final. There is no appeal against it. Okay. So very simple. So imagine. They told we are going to use it against revolutionaries. But what if they use it against Tilak only? If Tilak is gone to jail for two years, huh? what will happen to our national movement? Right. So, understood, there is a lot of scope for misuse. So, Gandhi told, I will oppose this. Tilak was busy in Valentino Chiro episode, no? He was busy fighting the defamation case in England. So, Gandhi told, in absence of Tilak, I will take, take care of it. So, on 22nd March, 22nd March 1919, Viceroy signed the ordinance. Fine. You know the ordinance power now? <coughs> Without convening the assembly, you can do something. And see, the act of 1919 came in December 1919 and we are talking about March, April 1919. Okay? Understood? The act of 1919 came in December 1919 and we are talking about March, April 1919. Fine? Almost 9 months uh, before the act came into force. So now we are still in under the act of 1909. So as per act of 1909, there are 32 Indians, up to 32 Indians in the assembly. Strength is also less. Strength is also less. The scope for debate, the scope for protesting, it is all less. So our members were opposing. But that opposition was very ineffective. Viceroy had the ordinance making power. He had the veto power. So he, using his veto and ordinance making power, he passed the bill. He made it an act. Rowlett bill became an act. So there was severe protest all across the country. And Gandhi gave call for All India Hartal on 30th March. Gandhi gave call for All India Hartal on 30th March. But it was later postponed to 6th April because proper arrangements could not be made by 30th March. It was later postponed to 6th April. Fine. 6th April. And situation was very critical in Punjab Delhi region. The masses of Punjab and Delhi, they were like boiling like never before. They supported Rowlett Act to the core. They came out in streets in large numbers to support the Rowlett Satyagraha. So they stood with Gandhi firmly. They stood with Gandhi firmly. So there was severe violence. There were clashes with police. Many Satyagrahis were killed. So a lot of mishaps happened. And Gandhi himself was arrested while he was trying, trying to travel to Delhi and Punjab. He was removed from the train. Fine. So why Delhi and Punjab? The situation became critical. While other parts of India, they were not very responding to Gandhi's call. Sorry? That was later. He was arrested on 7th April. But 30th March only the situation had become very critical in Punjab. Yes, first reason, brutal suppression of Gadar revolt. Second reason, spread of Japanese encephalitis. But, sorry, Spanish flu, Spanish flu. Why the masses of Punjab supported Gandhi during Rowlett Satyagraha? First reason, brutal suppression of Gadar revolt. Second one, 
spread of Spanish flu and government apathy. The government did, did not do anything to help the masses. Spread of Spanish flu and government apathy. Third one, forced recruitment of Punjabi youth during the First World War. Forced recruitment of Punjabi youth. Punjabi youth during the First World War. So many of them were killed. They were sent to the battlefield without much training. So they were the sitting ducks for the German forces. Fine. So India lost more soldiers. They were forcefully recruited without proper training. They were sent to the battlefield. So lot of losses. Therefore, they were angry, quite naturally very angry against the Britishers. And this anger, it came out as a form of support to Gandhi during the Rawlat Satyagraha. Okay. And uh, as you all know, during Rawlat Satyagraha, right on, Hind Swaraj of Gandhi, Hind Swaraj of Gandhi was published despite the ban, was published and circulated despite the ban. Hind Swaraj of Gandhi, that book was banned in India. Hind Swaraj of Gandhi was published and circulated despite the ban. Okay. So, this was one thing. So you all know about Jallian Wallaba massacre, 13th April. So after that Gandhi was shocked by the violence, he withdrew Robert Satyagraha. He withdrew Robert Satyagraha. Okay. And before this Robert Satyagraha had formed something called as right on Satyagraha Sabha. Satyagraha Sabha. To train the volunteers in the Satyagraha method. Gandhi started Satyagraha Sabha to train the volunteers in the Satyagraha method. <coughs> Understood? What is Satyagraha? Peaceful demand for justice. First thing. Second thing. The method of Satyagraha involves, it involves changing the heart of your enemy through your sufferings. Changing the heart of your enemy through your sufferings. First thing, demand for justice. Second one, changing the heart of your enemy through your... Enemy means suppressor. Enemy suppressor through your sufferings. Whatever punishment he gives, you will accept it happily. That is what they say, no? In simple words. If anybody slaps you, show another chin. That is how it works. That person should get tired of slapping. Oh, this guy is such a good person. Why am I slapping him? Right. Understood? That was Gandhi's philosophy. Gandhi innovated this method in South Africa. He introduced it in India for the first time during Rawlat Satyagraha. Okay? But this was a blunder. Without training the people in Satyagraha method, Gandhi started this Satyagraha. So people like... Uh, Despite the imposition of martial law, despite the ban on the public meeting, they gathered in Jallianwala Bagh. That led to the massacre. So Gandhi was shocked by it. He withdrew the Satyagraha. But by then, the damage was already done. So next thing, right on, non-cooperation moment. Somebody has taken my name only. 
commenting. <laughs> okay. Fine. See, civil disobedience means you, will, you willingly disobey the law. Non-cooperation means you need not disobey the law. You just don't listen to them. Fine? Non-cooperation means not cooperating with the authorities. They'll ask you, who is the Satyagri, who did this? You'll not say anything. They'll ask you to pay the tax in time. You'll not pay. Understood? You'll not cooperate with them. Civil disobedience means you know this is law, this is illegal. You willingly violate the law. You know this violating the law is not legal, but still you willingly violate it. Purposefully. So that is civil disobedience. Purposeful or willing disobedience of law. Willingly violating the law. That is disobedience, civil disobedience. Okay. So, <coughs> okay. Fine. Non-cooperation moment. So, what are the reasons for launch of non-cooperation moment? Right on. There were situational factors. What were they? Nineteen twenty. August nineteen twenty. Okay. Ah. Gandhi trained more people. See, 19, 19 it failed. After that, Gandhi trained more people in Satyagraha. Core. It was the core of all Gandhian movements. Fine. Satyagrahis will take the punishment. They will be peaceful. They will be non-violent. Fine. So, the fundamental philosophy of all Gandhian movements is Satyagraha only. And the nature of the movement will change. Nature will change. What is the nature? Sometimes you do not cooperate with them. Sometimes you will become active, you violate the laws. The nature of the movement changes. But the core fundamental philosophy is Satyagraha only. Peace, non-violence, accepting the punishment. Okay? So, fine. What was I telling? Reasons. Okay. Situational factors. First thing, Jalianwala Bagh massacre, Rawal attacked. Jalianwala Bagh massacre, Rawal attacked. Okay. Uh, dissatisfaction with the act of 1919. Dissatisfaction with the act of 1919. Hunter Committee report. See, 1884 Hunter Committee on Education is different. 1919 Hunter Committee is different. 1919 Hunter Committee. It was to investigate into Jalian Walabag massacre. That committee told General Dyer did not do any mistake except that he did not give warning before firing. He did not give warning before firing. That was his only mistake. Apart from that, he did not do any mistake. Okay. It completely absolved him of any crime, any mistake. So that was again a very painful thing. Kilapat issue. Kilapat issue. Severe inflation due to wartime taxation. Severe inflation due to wartime taxation. No response or neglect of, neglect by, sorry, neglect by the Viceroy Chemsford. Neglect by the Viceroy Chemsford. And later, Viceroy reading, reading, 
पढ़ाई दैट वॉज द नेम ऑफ द वॉइस रॉय ओके सो दे नेग्लेक्टेड वॉट गांधी कैन डू ओके सो दीस आर द रीजन नाउ गांधी he designed non cooperation program he met tilak he gave his proposal sir i have designed a wonderful program because who was the boss of inc at that time tilak and gandhi had realized the mistakes he realized that raulat satyagraha could not reach more and more people because it was not supported by all india organization which is the largest all india organization inc who is the boss of inc tilak because all moderates gone Gokhale and Mehta passed away in 1915. Surendra Nath Banerjee walked away in 1919. So Tilak is the boss. So you have, if you have to get the support of INC, you have to talk to Tilak. You have to convince him. So Gandhi went. I mean, Gandhi proposed to Tilak about certain uh, plan of action. The first thing he told, sir, my plan has three stages. First stage, renunciation of titles. Right down. non cooperation program had three stages had three stages and three objectives three stages and three objectives first stage renunciation or returning of titles and awards given by british renunciation or returning of titles and awards given by british I think in 2018, one movement started award wapsi. Right. So the awards that were given by the government, the people started returning it because there was rise of intolerance in the society all of a sudden. <laughs> so it happens. India is a diverse country, you know. So what about? Hand out. <laughs> yeah, it is already posted, man. Did you all get it? No. Nothing happens. Dissatisfaction. I have to show my dissatisfaction. Protest. I am not happy with the government. I have to show that. I have to make some news. It doesn't bother government in any way. Fine. So don't think it will bother government and all. There are fine. Lot of things to take care of. It is just a symbolic protest, man. I am going to return my award. That's all. It's a simple, symbolic protest that I don't respect your rule. It doesn't harm the government or bother the government in any way. Okay, so it's a symbolic protest. So, first thing. So, as a part of this stage, Gandhi returned his Kesare Hind, Rabindranath Tagore returned his Knighthood. So, first stage. Stage two. Stage two. Boycott. of british goods schools and colleges government offices boycott of british goods schools and colleges government offices and courts schools and colleges government offices and courts assembly elections assembly elections in bracket as per act of 1919 As per the Act of 1919, they wanted to conduct the elections in 1920. INC told we are going to boycott it. So this is stage two. Fine. Government servants are supposed to resign from the service and take part in NCM. Children and youth not supposed to go to school and colleges. They are supposed to take part in NCM. Lawyers should not attend the court. They should support NCM. Nobody should contest the election and vote in the elections. They should support NCM. Fine. We have to boycott the British goods, promote the Swadeshi goods, burn down the British goods, not consume the alcohol. so all these things were part of second stage okay stage 3 stage 3 what is stage 3 tax boycott 
tax boycott or tax revolt. In bracket, right on. This stage was implemented on a pilot basis. This stage was implemented on a pilot basis on a pilot basis on 5th February 1922. in Bardoli of Gujarat, in Bardoli of Gujarat, but the moment ended on the same day due to Chauri Chaura event, due to Chauri Chaura event. moment ended on the same day due to Chauri Chaura event. Okay, close the bracket. So, third stage could not be introduced all across the country. It was introduced on an experimental basis in Bardoli of Gujarat, but on the same day the moment ended. Okay. So, what were the three stages? I mean, uh, three stages, now you know. What were the three objectives? Right on. First one, justice to Punjab wrongs, justice to Punjab wrongs. What is Punjab wrong? Jalian Walabag massacre. Justice to Punjab Bronx. Second one, justice to Khalifa. In bracket you can write. Restoration of territories and its position. Restoration of territories and its position. First World War he lost against the Britishers. So what Britishers did? They took away his kingdom, they took away his position. So all across the world they started Khilafat movement. In India also, Khilafat committee was formed under the leadership of so this uh, Ali brothers, Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali and also Asrat Mohani, they had formed this Khilafat committee. And in 1920, Gandhi was made the chairperson of this Khilafat committee and Gandhi included the Khilafat issue in the NCM program. Okay. Third objective, Swaraj within an year, achieving Swaraj within an year, one year deadline. But Gandhi did not say what is Swaraj, clever person he was, lawyer no. He told you will achieve Swaraj in one year, but he did not say what is Swaraj. Okay. People did not know, just like Maggie cannot be prepared in two minutes, Swaraj cannot be achieved in one year. People went mad. They went mad. They thought like, yes, Gandhi will deliver a Swaraj. They went behind him. Right. So features, right on. Communal harmony. Communal harmony. All India mass movement. Communal harmony. All India Mass Movement, formation of INC Volunteer Corps, just like we have NCC, no? National Cadet Corps and all, formation of INC Volunteer Corps, <coughs> next one, formation of Nationalistic Universities, formation of Nationalistic Universities. See, till now we had national schools and colleges. Now we are forming universities only, nationalistic universities like Gujarat University, Gujarat University, Bihar and Kashi Vidyapit, Bihar and Kashi Vidyapit, and Jamia Milia Islamia, Jamia Milia. Islamia. Zakir Hussain was the main person. Zamiya Milia Islamia. Okay. So all these nationalistic universities were formed during NCM. 
okay so next point more popular more popular than all earlier mass movements of india more popular than all earlier mass movements of india okay next point disagreement between disagreement between gandhi and swaraj sorry gandhi and tilak with regard to satyagraha method with regard to satyagraha method tilak wanted passive resistance gandhi told satyagraha <coughs> satyagraha method and also khilafat issue and also khilafat issue okay the next point ncm was initially launched on 1st august 1920 without support of inc 1st august 1920 without support of inc it was launched without support of inc on 1st august 1920 police stop later special session of inc later special session of inc held in september 1920 held in september 1920 presided by lala rajpat rai <coughs> accepted the ncm of gandhi accepted the ncm of gandhi okay so on the same day of its launch tilak passed away okay next point see coinciding with ncm i don't coinciding with ncm several present tribal and labor movements happened coinciding with ncm several present tribal and labor movements happened all across india so what were they in malabar region mopla malabar region mopla movement malabar region mopla movement in andhra region rampa revolt alluri sitarama raju in andhra region rampa revolt alluri sitarama raju okay in gujarat region in gujarat region no tax campaign bardoli and keda gujarat region no tax campaign bardoli and keda in rajasthan region in rajasthan region bill and bijolia movements again tribal movements bill and bijolia movements in punjab region akali dal movement it is related to gurudwara reforms akali dal movement in chatisgarh region tana bhagat movement in chatisgarh region tana bhagat movement related to liquor boycott related to 
लिकर बॉयकॉट इन बेंगाल रीजन एंटी इंडिगो मूवमेंट एंटी इंडिगो मूवमेंट लेड बाय सोमेश्वर प्रसाद इंडिगो ए एन टी आई एंटी इंडिगो मूवमेंट लेड बाय सोमेश्वर प्रसाद इन यूपी रीजन ए का मूवमेंट ए का मूवमेंट ई के ए ए का मीन्स यूनिटी लेड बाय मदरी पसी एम ए डी ए आर आई पी ए एस आई एम ए डी ए आर आई पी ए एस आई ओके इन ईस्टर्न यूपी रीजन हरदोई बहरेच सीतापुर सो इन दिस रीजन दिट वॉज देर वॉट इज एक मोमेंट वेरी सिंपल यूनिटी ऑफ फार्मर्स दे टोल्ड दे टोल्ड फ्रॉम नो ऑनवर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू पे ओनली द लीगल रेंट लीगल रेंट वॉट एवर इज फिक्स बाय द गवर्नमेंट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू पे एनीथिंग एक्स्ट्रा because the zamindars were collecting lot of extra things from them called as nazrana fine illegally collected and they told from now onwards we are not going to do bega we are not going to work for free in the zamindars land and all we are going to pay the revenue whatever is fixed by the government we are going to pay it in time we are not going to do any free work they passed the resolution and zamindars reported it as a revolt by the farmers to the britishers so britishers sent police and army they suppressed this eka movement okay so this was the case and then right on kisan sabha movement started in up and awadh region kisan sabha movement started in up and awadh region Kisan Sabha movement started in UP and Awadh region. Next point: All India Trade Union Congress was formed in 1920. All India Trade Union Congress was formed in successfully almost uh, in different parts of india at the same time and it had the support of different sections of society also like peasants laborers tribals etc earlier like swadeshi movement only the urban population i mean urban participation some sections of society uh, peasants and labor participation was very minimal hrl again their participation was minimal but tilak tried to take the national movement to the villages and now the fruits of his efforts were evident so the participation of villagers the rural masses it was all there the participation of women was seen the capitalists also uh, some of the capitalist like gd birla and all they supported this okay different sections of society they supported this so this became more popular than the earlier mass movements of india so ultimately all know 
How it ended? Chauri Chaura event. Fine. So, 22 policemen were killed. So, that is one. Gandhi was shocked by Chauri Chaura event and he withdrew NCM. So, after the withdrawal of NCM, few months later, like uh, how NCM was withdrawn, please write down. End of NCM. End of NCM. Due to Chauri Chaura event. End of NCM due to Chauri Chaura event. Okay. So, Bardoli resolution was passed. Bardoli resolution was passed. Was passed. To withdraw NCM. Bardoli resolution was passed to withdraw NCM. In bracket by CWC, by CWC, Congress Working Committee on 12th February 1922, by CWC on 12th February 1922, okay. So, this was the case, fine. So, what is CWC, any idea? Congress Working Committee. Okay. When was it formed? Right on. Now we will cover teams as a session. I mean uh, sessions as a team. Okay. Sorry. So 1885, first session. 1885. Who was the president? W C Banerjee. W C Banerjee. 1886, Dharabai Navroji, Calcutta. Okay, who was the president? Dharabai Navroji, Calcutta. 1887, Madras, Syed Badruddin, Tayabji, first Indian Muslim. 1887, Madras. Syed Bradudrin, Tayabji. 1888, George Yule. George Yule, first European to preside INC. 1888, George Yule, Allahabad, first European to preside INC. Eighteen eighty nine, Bombay, William Wedderburn. Eighteen eighty nine, Bombay, William Wedderburn. William Wedderburn. Eighteen ninety, Calcutta, Firosha Mata. Eighteen ninety, Calcutta, Firosha Mata. Why it is important? Kadambini Ganguli addressed the INC session. First women to address the INC session. She was the first physician in entire South Asia. Kadambini Ganguli. Kadambini Ganguli became the first woman to address the INC session. 1890, Calcutta. Who was the president? Firosha Mehta. Okay. And then, uh, 1896, 1896, sorry, 1893, Dada by Noroji again. 1893, Dada by Noroji again. Okay. So, in the margins, write down Europeans who presided INC session. Europeans who presided INC session. By now, you know two of them. You know two of them. Who are they? George Yule, William Wedderburn. And then, now write down Alfred Webb, 1894. 
ஆல்ஃப்ரெட் வெப் எயிட்டீன் நைன்டி ஃபோர் ஹென்ரி காட்டன் நைன்டீன் ஜீரோ ஃபோர் நைன்டீன் செவன்டீன் கல்கட்டா ஆனிபெசன்ட் ஆனிபெசன்ட் ஓகே ஸோ நவ் அண்டர் த ஒன் மோர் சப் டாபிக் விமென்ஸ் ஹூ ப்ரிசைடட் ஐஎன்சி விமென்ஸ் ஹூ ப்ரிசைடட் ஐஎன்சி Annie Besant, 1917, first woman. Sarojini Naidu, 1925, Kanpur, first Indian woman. Sarojini Naidu, Kanpur, 1925, first Indian woman to preside INC. Okay? So let me ask you a very simple question. Consider the following statements. Which of the following persons, I mean, which of the following women served as the president of INC? Annie Besant, Sarojini Naidu, Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, sister of our Chacha. Okay? and then uh, sucheta kriplani sucheta kriplani kamala devi chattopadhyaya and then uh, there was one more lady forgot her name Hindi Cotton, did you write on where? No, like you wrote on Hindi Cotton, but did you write on which session? Bombay, 1904, Bombay. And William Waterburn was the only European who presided twice. William Waterburn presided twice. He presided again in 1910. William Waterburn presided again in 1910 okay yes another one nelly sen gupta so how many of the, like among them who served as the president of inc 1 2 for sure you know 6 you can be mean i can give you one more name aruna asaf ali yes right on third name nelly sen gupta nelly sen gupta 1933 calcutta nelly sen gupta 1933 calcutta okay so malaviya was elected but she presided okay so this is the case three three women who presided inc before independence these three women after independence you know what all happened but before independence this is a story three women okay nelly sen gupta is less known one therefore upsc can catch she was a like what do you call uh, she married a indian she is a european basically she married an indian and she presided okay nelly sen gupta so 
And now, let's continue. Where were we? 1893, Lahore. Dada Ah. And then 1901, Calcutta, D.E. Vacha. Gandhi attended. 1901, Calcutta, D.E. Vacha. Deen Shah, Edelji, Vacha. Okay. So, 1905, Kopal Krishna Gokhale. What were the resolutions passed? Boycott and condemning the partition of Bengal. Boycott and condemning the partition of Bengal. 1905, Banaras, Gopal Krishna Gokhale. Two resolutions, boycott and condemning the partition of Bengal. 1906, Calcutta, Dada Bhai Noroji. 1906, Calcutta, Dada Bhai Noroji. Third session presided by him. Okay. What were the resolution? Swaraj Swadeshi National Education and Boycott. Swaraj Swadeshi National Education and Boycott. 1907, Surat. 1907, Surat. Split in INC. Who was the president? Rash Bihari Ghosh. Okay. And uh, 1908, Madras also he continued as the president. Rash Bihari Ghosh continued as the president. 1909, Lahore. 1909, Lahore. And, and, 1918, 1918, Bombay. Sorry, 1918, Delhi. 1918, Delhi. Madan Mohan Malviya. 1909, Lahore, 1918, Delhi. 09, 18, Madan Mohan Malviya. Okay. 1915, Satyendra Prasad Sinha, Bombay. Satyendra Prasad Sinha, Bombay. 1916, Lucknow, Ambika Charan Majumdar, Lucknow Pact. 1916, Lucknow, Ambika Charan Majumdar, Lucknow Pact. 3 elements INC Muslim League Pact Moderate Extremist Unity INC accepted separate communal electorates so three important things of Lucknow Pact 1917 you all know Annie Besant 1918 you all know Madan Mohan Malviya 1919 very important Amritsar Motilal Nehru 1919 Amritsar Motilal Nehru. So, what is expected in the session? Condemning Jallianwala Bagh massacre. Condemning the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. Nineteen twenty September special session. Nineteen twenty September special session. Lala Rajpatrai. Special session, Lala Laspatrai. Accepted the non cooperation program of Gandhi. Accepted the non cooperation program of Gandhi. And then 1920 December. See, usually the Congress session happens in December only. 
नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी डिसेंबर नागपुर विजय राघवाचार्य विजय राघवाचार्य विजय राघवाचार्य सो इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन वाई बिकॉज फर्स्ट थिंग मेंबरशिप फी ऑफ आईएनसी राइट ऑफ मेंबरशिप फी ऑफ आईएनसी वाज रिड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम रुपीज टू फ्रॉम रुपीज टू टू फोर अन्नास फोर ट्वेंटी फाइव पैसे फोर अन्नास मीन्स ट्वेंटी फाइव पैसे ओके सेकेंड पॉइंट स्ट्रक्चरल रीऑर्गनाइजेशन ऑफ आई एन सी स्ट्रक्चरल रीऑर्गनाइजेशन ऑफ आई एन सी ड्रा ट्राइंगल लाइक दिस लोकल कांग्रेस कमिटीज लाइक ब्लॉक लेवल तालूक लेवल डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल विलेज लेवल कांग्रेस कमिटीज and above that provincial congress committees madras province congress committee bombay province congress committee so provincial congress committees and above that all india congress committee above that all india congress committee and above that congress working committee congress working committee which is a 15 member body 15 member body functioning as functioning as the topmost decision makers of inc functioning as the topmost decision makers of inc okay so next thing The Constitution of INC was amended. The Constitution of INC was amended. That is, achievement of Swaraj. Achievement of Swaraj through peaceful and constitutional means. Achievement of Swaraj through peaceful and constitutional means. was changed to peaceful and legitimate means peaceful and legitimate means fine what is the difference between constitutional means and legitimate means very simple constitutional means means moderate methods prayer petition and protest legitimate means means it will allow you to practice satyagraha tax revolt civil disobedience all these things okay it will allow all these things understood who framed the constitution of inc moderates so whatever their philosophy it was reflective in the constitution of inc but with the changing times moderate methods had become obsolete it was useless it was outdated therefore gandhi wanted to change it he wanted to follow different methods therefore he had used the term legitimate means means which also include satyagraha non cooperation cdm all these things okay so these things were changed in inc and the next point 1921 hakim azmal khan 1921 hakim azmal khan ahmedabad was the acting president was the acting president in place of in place of c r das in back you can write imprisoned C.R. Das in bracket imprisoned. Okay. 
so 1922 gaya session cr das 1922 gaya session cr das formation of swarajist party formation of swarajist party okay 1923 maulana mohammad ali maulana mohammad ali kakinada andhra pradesh kakinada andhra pradesh okay maulana mohammad ali 1924 gandhi bagam 1924 gandhi balagam session only session presided by gandhi resolution against untouchability resolution against untouchability was passed nineteen twenty five sarojini naidu kanpur nineteen twenty five sarojini naidu kanpur nineteen twenty six sorry nineteen twenty seven madras yammi ansari Madras M. E. Ansari. Resolution to boycott the Simon Commission. Resolution to boycott the Simon Commission. In every form and in every stage was adopted. Resolution to boycott the Simon Commission. In every form and in every stage was adopted. 1928. Calcutta, Motilal Nehru. Calcutta, Motilal Nehru. All India Youth Congress was formed. All India Youth Congress was formed. Nineteen twenty nine. Lahore, nineteen twenty nine. Lahore, cha cha, cha cha. First resolution of Pune Swaraj was passed. First resolution of Pune Swaraj was passed. Next point. Twenty-six January nineteen thirty was to be observed as Independence Day. Twenty-six January nineteen thirty was to be observed as Independence Day. Okay. So these two things were there, and then uh, in nineteen twenty-seven, go back and write. Go back and write. Nineteen twenty-seven. Emmy Ansari. Just add one more small point. Snap resolution on Swaraj means quick resolution, unplanned resolution. Snap resolution on Swaraj was introduced by Chacha. Snap resolution on Swaraj was introduced by Chacha. Okay. This was the second instance. Where INC passed the resolution on Swaraj. Okay, first instance 1906 Calcutta, Dada Bhai Nauruji. Second instance 1927 Madras, M. E. Ansari. Third instance Pune Swaraj 1929 Lahore. 1930 no session C D M. I know 1930 no session C D M. March. 
Karachi session. 1931 March, Karachi session. Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Again, only session presided by him. Sardar Vallabhai Patel. First point, reiterated. Reiterated. The Purna Swaraj resolution. Reiterated Purna Swaraj resolution. Second point, define Swaraj. Define Swaraj for the first time. Third point, accepted Gandhi Irwin Pact. Fourth point, decided to send Gandhi as a representative to second RTC, second round table conference, decided to send Gandhi as a representative of INC to second RTC, second round table conference. Next one. Resolution on Fundamental Rights. Resolution on Fundamental Rights. Which included two special things. We'll just write down those things. Other things you can deduce by yourself. You already read it. One is free and compulsory primary education. Free and compulsory primary education. From 6 to 12 years. 6 to 12 years. Now it is 6 to 14, but back then it was 6 to 12. Second one, universal adult franchisee. Universal adult franchisee. Okay. And then there was one more very important thing. You will reject it on the face of it. Compulsory military training. for the youth influence of russia man influence of russia compulsory military training for the youth the moment you look at it will like eliminate that option hey congress karachi session no such thing okay so and there was a right on resolution on national economic program Resolution on NEP, National Economic Program. So National Economic Program was with regard to labors and peasants. Okay. With regard to labors, with regard to labors, what all Patel demanded was, first thing, minimum wages, minimum wages, limited hours of work, Limited hours of work, protection to women labor, protection to women labor, government control of important industries like railways, mines, etc. Government control of important industries. <coughs> With regard to peasants, I mean, uh, one more point, right to form unions, right to form unions for labors. With regard to peasants, write down, substantial reduction in rent and revenue, substantial reduction in rent and revenue. Relief from indebtedness. Relief from indebtedness.
okay see almost 90% of presents in india they were indebted they were submerged in some loans they had borrowed a lot of things so this was the situation so this is kind of a demand like loan waiver so cancel of all the loans so that kind of demand next thing exemption for uneconomic holdings from the payment of revenue exemption for uneconomic holdings from payment of revenue next one right to form union for peasants right to form union for peasants okay so one of them like a uh, your batchmate or uh, someone watching the apa classes they asked me a question sir what is the difference between riot and a peasant farmer and a peasant present means he is a landless riot that's all he doesn't own the land but he will work on the land he is a landless riot that's all riot owns the land present does not he will work in some other's land okay that is the difference fine so next one 1932 33 and 34 sorry 32 and 33 INC was banned 1932 and 33 INC was banned and 33 you know Nelly Sen Gupta okay 1934 Rajendra Prasad 34 Rajendra Prasad and 1936 April Lucknow 1936 April Lucknow Chacha 1936 April Lucknow Chacha for the first time INC session for the first time INC session are you all right coincided with INC session coincided with All India Kisan Sabha session INC session coincided with All India Kisan Sabha session in bracket held at the same time same place held at the same time same place fine and Kisan Sabha session was presided by Sahajananda Saraswati Swami Sahajananda Saraswati Swami Sahajananda Saraswati Okay Okay and INC demanded the formation of constituent assembly for India INC demanded the formation of constituent assembly for India This is the first time we demanded inc demanded okay inc demanded the formation of constituent assembly for india fine 1934 only mn roy they talked about it but 1936 inc officially demanded okay so 1936 december 1936 december faizpur session FIZ 1936 December Faizpur session Chacha again third session presided by him 1936 December Chacha again so first session of INC to be held in a village first session of INC to be held in a village all india agrarian program was adopted all india agrarian program was adopted and 
it was silent on the issue of and it was silent on the issue of exploitation by zamindars and talukdars and it was silent on the issue of exploitation by zamindars and talukdars okay next one 1938 haripura session subhash chandra bos 1938 haripura session subhash chandra bos national planning committee was set up national planning committee was set up to prepare blueprint for the development of the nation to prepare blueprint for the development of the nation after independence and it was chaired by chacha blueprint for the development of the nation after independence what to do after the britishers leave this country we have to keep the plan ready no after they go we cannot start planning we have to keep the plan ready so national planning committee to prepare the blueprint for the development of the nation after the independence and it was chaired by chacha it was chaired by chacha and this planning is a socialistic method planning is a socialistic method we followed it from ussr fine this planning is a socialistic method followed from ussr and even karachi resolution you can see a lot of socialistic influence control of industries by workers i mean sorry uh, government control of industries production of labor interests all these things are socialistic things okay please english but, uh, does it include the planning given by the m beshwarya uh, here it was just his proposal okay so vishweshwarya's plan was different and npc was different two different indi individuals okay so it does not include okay next one 1939 tripuri session tripuri again it's a village in madhya pradesh tripuri session subhash chandra bos tripuri session subhash chandra bos okay bos resigned due to disagreements with cwc bos resigned due to disagreements with cwc bos was the president but congress working committee was dominated by gandhians fine so bos resigned 1940 1940 ramgarh session maulana azad Maulana Azad Ramgarh session okay read right on resolution was passed resolution was passed that INC would launch INC would launch CDM 
as soon as its organization is fit enough inc would launch cdm as soon as its organization is fit enough is fit enough fitness strong enough fit enough okay 1946 meerat acharya kriplani 1946 meerat acharya kriplani last session before independence okay 1948 patabi sitaramayya first session after independence was defeated by bosno he had that long pending desire so 1948 jaipur patabi sitaramayya 1948 jaipur patabi sitaramayya first session after independence okay after independent lot of sessions of inc was presided by women only after chacha lot of sessions presided by his daughter after her lot of sessions presided by her daughter in law so somebody was asking why many sessions of inc presided by men only <laughs> so, so before independence we were patriarchal society after that equality okay so fine now gandhi was arrested and when gandhi was arrested no definite leader so there was a, at the same time britishers announced that they would conduct the elections for assembly as per the act of 1919 what was the tenure of the lower house as per the act of 1919 3 years first election was conducted in 1920 so second election 1920 1921 22 so second set of elections were pending in 1922 fine so there was a dilemma 1920 they had unanimously decided to boycott the elections INC. Now there was a dilemma whether to contest the elections or not, because Gandhi failed to deliver on his promises. First thing, Jallianwala Bagh massacre was like we did not get the justice for it. Secondly, we did not get the Swaraj. Thirdly, we did not get the Swaraj. Fourthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Fifthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Sixthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Seventhly, we did not get the Swaraj. Eighthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Ninthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Tenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Eleventhly, we did not get the Swaraj. Twelfthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Thirteenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Fourteenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Fifteenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Sixteenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Seventeenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Eighteenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Nineteenthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Twentyfifthly, we did not get the Swaraj. Twenty-first, we did not get the Swaraj. Twenty-second, we did not get the Swaraj. Twenty-third, we did not get the Swaraj. Twenty-fourth, we did not get the Swaraj. Twenty-fifth, we did not get the Swaraj. those government servants who were resigned during the ncm were not taken back into the service so people suffered a lot lots of lands were confiscated lot of people were jailed so we had suffered a lot but we did not get anything in return so gandhi was jailed so there were questions regarding the efficiency or effectiveness of gandhi and methods so everybody came to a conclusion that gandhi's path is not the only path so we'll have to uh, search for the new path fine in the quest of independence Gandhi has failed, so we have to search for a new path. So Gandhi told non-cooperation with British. We will never cooperate with British. So that is the reason he launched NCM. Now Gandhi is not there. Gandhi before getting arrested, he told will not contest the elections. Now Gandhi is not there. So there are two groups in INC, whether to contest or not to contest. One group was dissatisfied with Gandhi, the senior leaders of INC who entered into national movement before Gandhi. like motilal nehru c r das those senior leaders they were not happy with gandhi withdrawing ncm without consulting them fine so they were not happy with gandhi and methods they wanted to try a new way whereas there were a lot of followers of gandhi like chacha etc rajendra prasad chacha vallabhai patel they wanted to continue the gandhi's methods of non cooperation so now there are two groups in inc one who follows gandhi one who doesn't follow gandhi okay so 1922 cr das president of uh, gaya session he passed the resolution that they are going to form a new party the president of inc in the annual session of inc announced the formation of a new party all india khilafat swarajya party all india khilafat swaraj party and they decided to contest the elections okay cr das was the president and motilal nehru was the secretary motilal nehru was the secretary another senior leaders of this party was vital bhai patel 
विठल भाई पटेल नाउ स्वराजिस्ट वर्सेस नो चेंजर्स और गांधी एक्स सो दे आल्सो लाइक कॉल इट एस प्रो चेंजर्स ओके सो दे वांटेड टू कंटेस्ट इलेक्शंस दे वांटेड टू एंटर इनटू लेजिस्लेचर एंड showcase the hollowness of the reforms they wanted to stop the anti indian policies being passed by the british government they wanted to explore new methods of struggle against the britishers therefore they wanted to contest the assembly elections but these people they wanted to tread gandhi's path they wanted to continue with the gandhi's policy of non cooperation with the britishers by boycotting the elections by continuing the struggle and resistance against the british rule they wanted to tread the Gandhi's path of non-cooperation. Fine. So they contested the elections. They won a fair number of seats, 45 out of, sorry, 41 out of 104. But it was not enough to get the majority. Therefore, what they did? They formed coalition with independent candidates like Madan Mohan Malviya, Jinnah. They contested the elections as independents. So, they formed coalition with those leaders, and they also formed coalition with this uh, Liberal Party of Surendranath Banerjee, and their coalition. Today there are a lot of coalitions. No, NDA is there, Indi is there. Earlier there was UPA. So, like that. they formed a coalition called as nationalist front they formed a coalition called as nationalist front okay and they elected vittal bhai patel as the first indian to be the president of central legislative assembly okay they got the majority no after by forming the coalition so they joined hands with independents and uh, liberals they elected vital bhai patel when speaker when the presiding officer is your guy obviously you have that control over the assembly okay and uh, what maharashtra sorry speaker power maharashtra you know for the this is a sena factor oh no current affairs please <laughs> history let it remain history because If I get diverted, things will take a different form. <laughs> Fine. I don't want labels. I don't want branding. National, anti-national. Go to Pakistan. So, <laughs> you come to regular classes. We'll discuss freely. But here, live telecast on YouTube also. So, I want to go home safely. Fine. Okay. So. Understood my point of view. Okay. Now they formed this coalition, and uh, they started demanding a lot of things. First thing, they criticized. They criticized the reforms of 1919. They told this is totally ineffective, nonsense, obsolete. It is not working only. So British had to set up something called as Muddy Man Committee. to review the working of act of 1919 so write down their contributions contributions first thing muddy man committee to review the working of act of 1919 and to suggest reforms and then lee committee lee committee on civil service reforms fine and it was during their times public account committee also came into existence public account committee you know about this committee no very famous parliamentary committee public accounts committee also came into existence and there was scheme committee 
एस के डबल एन स्कीन कमिटी और सैंडर्स्ट कमिटी स्कीन और सैंडर्स्ट एस आई एन डी एच यू आर एस टी स्कीन कमिटी और सैंडर्स्ट कमिटी सो दिस कमिटी वॉज अबाउट इंडियनाइजेशन ऑफ मिलिटरी रैंक्स और ऑफिशियल मिलिटरी पोजिशन इंडियनाइजेशन ऑफ ऑफिशियल मिलिटरी पोजिशन ओके सी इन आर्मी ऑल द सोल्जर्स दे वर इंडियंस बट ऑल ऑफिशियल पोजिशन फॉर फिल्ड बाई ब्रिटिशर्स सो वी आस्ट क्रो इंडियंस आर ऑल्सो फिट एनफ टू बिकम द ऑफिशियल मेजर्स लेफ्टिनेंट्स यू आर ऑल्सो फिट एनफ सो वाई देर इज लेस रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ इंडियंस इन द ऑफिशियल पोजिशन यूर्स रिप्रेजेंटेशन then this committee was set up and motilal nehru was a part of this committee he was a member of this committee motilal nehru was the member of this committee scheme committee fine and find out who was the first indian to be the member of pac find out who was the swaraj's leader first indian to be the member of pac was a swaraj's leader okay these leaders they were not calling themselves as moderates or extremists why they have to call themselves understand why they have to call themselves see when we look at history we gave them the names these people took up the moderate path moderates these people were extreme than the moderates therefore extremists we gave them the names when we look back and we gave them the names they did not call themselves as moderates or uh, extremists why they have to give is there any condition that you have to name your group compulsorily register your group as per indian societies act 1860 no such compulsion so they were like minded people they had same thoughts same frequencies they followed the same methods therefore they came together in class let's say like you are attending the basic course or foundation course or in your classroom college classroom only so there will be five six group i mean five six friends group you have like th- i mean like minded nature similar thoughts you hang out together so do you have any name for that group is it compulsory no similarly here also okay so this was their contribution and also last contribution right now defeated public safety bill defeated public safety bill and forced vice roy to use his veto power very often and forced vice roy to use his veto power very often okay so next point they also opposed trade disputes bill they also opposed trade disputes bill trade disputes bill and many other anti indian policies and legislations and many other anti indian policies and legislations fine they went to assembly they started questioning the british authority fine understood they made them accountable with whatever limited powers we had they made them accountable so as a result of this all these committees had to be set up there was uh, one more committee right on like not a part of this in the margins please write down butler committee this was a pyq butler committee to enquire into relationship between princely states and the british government to enquire into the relationship between to enquire into the relationship between princely states 
princely states and British government. Okay, this was a PYQ, you should know. So, on the other hand, Gandhians, so they work towards promoting secularism, communal harmony. Fine. Because the Khilafat bond was broken. Khilafat bond was broken. The position of Khalifa itself was abolished. Turkey was modernized by Kemal Ataturk Pasha. So the Khilafat bond was broken. So Hindu Muslims started fighting again. There was something called a Shuddhi movement, Tablik Tanzim, etc. Converse, religious conversions, reconversions, all those skirmishes were there. There were a lot of provocative statements by various leaders. So all these things led to escalation of communal rivalry and tensions. So Gandhi aids worked towards promoting the communal harmony. Fine. Second thing, they promoted the nationalistic education, especially the tribal and the backward region. They established a lot of ashrams in the backward areas like Vedichi Ashram, Vedichi Ashram, Varda Ashram. They were meant for the education of tribals. Vedichi Ashram, Varda Ashram, meant for the education of tribals. Fine. So they started promoting the concept of Charaka and Kadi. The concept of Charaka and Kadi. Fine. See, due to NCM, lot of youth thrown out of school, lot of husbands imprisoned, lot of people became jobless, lot of properties were confiscated, people were suffering, they lost their means of livelihood. So this Gandhi had thought it is their moral responsibility to help the people regain their livelihood. So therefore, they started promoting Kadi and Charaka. And now, okay, I will produce the Kadi clothes using the Charaka that you gave me. Who will buy it? Therefore, set up, they set up something called as All India Kadi Board, 1925, All India Kadi Board. After independence, it became Kadi and Village Industries Commission of India, KVIC. All India Kadi Board, 1925. After independence, it became KVIC. What is the function? You produce the Kadi board, you produce the Kadi, I'll purchase the Kadi from you, I'll give you the money. So you can take care of your livelihood. I'll sell it to someone else. Fine. Whatever Kadi you produce, you can give it to me. I'll buy it from you. I'll sell it to someone else. I'll brand it, I'll send it to someone else. Okay. That's how it works. So it protected the livelihood of the common masses. Understood? One is secularism, second one Kadi, third one education. Fine. So, one group, Swarajist, they were carrying on the national movement inside the assembly and this group, they were carrying on the national movement outside the assembly. So, they complemented each other's efforts. But there was a problem now. There was a problem now. So, Gandhi, after his release, he was arrested in 1922, released in 1924 because of ill health. So, after his release, he tried to bring them together. He tried to bring them together. So they agreed to, like Swarajis agreed to work within INC, work within INC, but still there was some uh, friction between them. So in 1925, what Gandhi did? He went to Maulana Muhammad Ali's residence in Delhi. He started hunger strike with two demands. He wanted to unify both the groups of INC. Secondly, he wanted to promote the message of communal harmony. Hindu Muslims should be together or else I will not eat. Hunger strike in Molana Muhammad Ali's residence. So Gandhi thought both Swarajis and Gandhiites would come running to me and agree to work together. Secondly, Hindus and Muslims will start, I mean, will stop fighting against each other. Aapas mein jo lehte hai na, wo ban kar lenge. Fine. So this was Gandhi's, like what do you say, estimate. But nothing happened. His hunger strike went on for three weeks. 21 days without food, nothing happened. Except Gandhi, it's nobody came. Gandhi was hurt. Like, you people don't even value my life, man. I'm doing hunger strike. Fine. Gandhi was hurt. So, Gandhi told, retirement, political 
retirement. He retired, I mean, he retired from politics. 1925. He told, I'm not, I'm, not go, I'm not going to be the part of INC, I'm not going to be the part of this national movement. He retired from active politics. Fine. And Congress became even more reckless at that time. It became even more reckless. So, what happened? So, within Swarajas, within Swarajas, C.R. Das passed away in 1925 and Motila Nehru became the top leader of Swarajas and there were disputes between them also, communal issues, beef eating controversy and all happened. Motila Nehru was supporting beef eating, C.R. Das told, see eating and all is a personal issue, don't talk it in public. So it became very public, like they argued in public. So. So within Swarajist, there were two groups, responsivist and non-responsivist. Responsivist, Madan Mohan Malviya, Lala Lajpatrai, they advocated cooperation with British to protect Hindu interests, to protect Hindu interests. So, non responsivist like uh, Motilal Nehru, Vital Bhai Patel, etc., they told non cooperation with British and will follow secular approach. Will follow secular approach. Okay. So, this responsivist later went on to become a separate group called as Congress Independents. They went on to become a separate group called as Congress Independents. Okay. Congress independence and uh, <coughs> because of this in the elections of 1926 Swarajas Swarajas they could not perform well fine the number of seats it came down instead of increasing it came down okay so things were not going as planned because there was lot of internal rivalries, internal tussles, they were fighting amongst themselves, they were giving statements against each other. So when the top leaders were fighting against each other, that led to confusion among the masses and that led to lot of problems. And at the same time, there is one factual thing, right on, permanent bureau of publicity. Right on, permanent bureau of publicity was established was established under the leadership of Sarojini Naidu and Motilal Nehru Sarojini Naidu and Motilal Nehru to spread to promote sorry to promote communal harmony to promote communal harmony and counter disinformation and counter disinformation. 100 years ago only there were fake news and all. Really. And to counter disinformation. So this fake news and all was leading to communal rights back then also. So to counter that they organized something called as Permanent Bureau of Publicity. Moti Lal Nehru, Sarojini Naidu. And even Jinnah contributed to that to some extent. Not heavily, not regularly, but to some extent. He was a credible Muslim leader, no? Jinnah. So, therefore. And now, nationalism uh, had taken the back seat because of this severe infighting and all. So, there was no definite leader for the national movement. Motila Nehru was there, but he was not acceptable to a lot of people. Fine. So, Lara Raspatra and Madan Mohan Malviya were there, but they were not acceptable to a lot of other leaders. There was no definite clear leader and Gandhi had retired. 
So in this situation of split and confusion, British has decided we will take advantage. We will take advantage of this situation. And uh, as per the act of 1990, no, there was one last provision that after 10 years, the functioning of this act has to be reviewed by a statutory committee. Statutory committee. So this act, 1919, it came in December 1919. So the committee should come in 1929. But the committee was announced in 1927 itself. Towards the end of 1927 itself. Almost two years ahead of its schedule. Why? Because of two reasons. First thing, there are two parties in England. One is Conservative Party. Another one is Labour Party. Conservative Party, hard and strict up approach towards Indians. They don't like Indians. They want to punish Indians. They want to keep Indians under the strong control. Fine. Labour Party, soft approach towards Indians. They had some sympathy towards Indians. They wanted to give more reforms to Indians, more powers to Indians, more autonomy to Indians. They had some sympathetic approach towards Indians. And this was the oldest party of England. So now this party was ruling England. 1928 general elections were pending. And in these elections, Conservative Party know, I mean they got to know that they are going to lose the elections. Because the popular perception was totally against them. How will they know? 2014 we all know which party is going to win. That party itself got to know that they are going to lose. Understood? So they got to know that they are going to lose the elections. Therefore, see now, as per this act, a committee is to be set up, set up in 1929. And if this party comes to power, and if they set up the committee, this party comes to power, and if they set up the committee, they might be very liberal towards Indians. They can give dominion status, they can give lot of things. So, if Indians get dominion status, what will be their next demand? Complete independence. So, you have to stop that. You have to stop that. And this party is inexperienced. They can do a lot of premature things. So, that is the reason. You have to stop them. You have to stop them from uh, deciding on Indian constitution. Therefore, in 1927, before the elections in England only, before the elections in England only, they announced this committee. And there was another reason also. Another reason was to take advantage of Indian situation. To take advantage of Indian situation. So what was Indian situation? Split, confusion, communal riots, no definite leader, no clarity. We were split. No unity among Indians. So they wanted to take advantage of Indian situation. Plus they wanted to prevent Labour Party from taking any major decision with regard to India. So with these two intentions, the Conservative Party of Government of England, what they did, towards the end of 1927 only, they announced setting up of a statutory committee led by John Simon, seven member committee, seven member committee. It is known as Simon Committee led by John Simon. Okay, This was a PYQ. This committee did not consist of any Indian members. Therefore, when it came to India, we started protesting against it and it was known as anti-Simon movement or anti-Simon agitation. You please ask this. So, what is the reason for anti-Simon agitation? Because no Indian representation in Simon committee. A committee that has come to reform or review the Indian constitution to suggest the measures for the future constitution and there is no Indian representation to it. So, this led to anti-Simon agitation. And that is what you have written, 1927 Madras session, M.A. Ansari, to boycott the Simon Commission in every form and in every stage. The decision was taken, 1927 December, the decision was taken to boycott Simon Commission in every form and in every stage. Why it was taken? No Indian representation in Simon Committee. So, this anti-Simon agitation, there are some special features and after that, we will have to go up to civil disobedience movement and we will be covering this... Uh, revolutionaries today okay so take the break till 2 120 it is 40 minutes break okay from 2 till 4 15 we'll have to rush okay
they are the ones who can provide it to you. I don't know what arrangement they are going to make. You have to contact them. I am only an academic person. I come teach and go. That's all. I have prepared the handouts and I have already given it to them. I don't know how they are going to meet you. I mean, deliver it to you. It's up to them, the administration. So please contact them. Okay? So even if you put, I mean, fill the entire comment or chat box with where is the handout, where can we get it? I don't know. <laughs> that is not my prerogative. Okay? So they are the ones concerned. Talk to them, mail them, flood them. <laughs> so. Done? Okay. Now Simon Commission. It came to India. And uh, again, there was synergy of forces <coughs> during the anti Simon agitation. Right on. The mainstream political parties, mainstream political parties. Like INC, INC, Hindu Mahasabha, INC, Hindu Mahasabha, Kama, Muslim League, Jinnah faction, Muslim League, Jinnah faction. Now there were two groups in Muslim League. Jinnah's group and there was one more person called as Shafi, Mohammad Shafi. Both of them had a separate group. Muslim group Jinnah faction supported anti simon agitation. Supported anti simon agitation. Okay. And then uh, Fiki, Federation of <coughs> Indian Industries, Chambers. Chambers of Commerce, okay. the group of capitalists formed in 1927 by G.D. Birla, FIKI, group of capitalists formed in 1927 by G.D. Birla. They also supported anti simon agitation. Even uh, HSRA, Hindustan Socialist Republican Association by Chandrasekhar Azad and Bhagat Singh, the revolutionary organization, they also supported anti simon agitation Fine. the labors and peasants sorry fiki hsri the labors and the peasants also supported fine all these forces supported the anti simon agitation okay but sikh league sikh league of punjab justice party of madras sikh league of punjab justice party of madras muslim league Shafi group or Shafi faction, Muslim League, Shafi group or Shafi faction, supported Simon Commission, supported Simon Commission, okay. So like this anti Simon agitation, it took a form of a mass movement. Wherever the Simon went, he was met with severe opposition. Okay. Let's say for example, in Madras, anti Simon agitation was led by C R. C Rajagopalachari, right now, in Madras. Anti Simon agitation was led by C R C Rajagopalachari. Madras, C Rajagopalachari. Bombay. Bombay. Jinnah, Jinnah, and Yusuf Mehrali, 
Jinnah and Yusuf Mehrali. So he was the one who gave the term Simon Go Back. And later he was the one who gave the term Quit India. Yusuf Mehrali. He coined the term Simon Go Back. And he was the one who coined the term Quit India. He was a communist leader from Bombay region. Yusuf Mehrali. Simon Go Back and Quit India. Both the terms were given by him. Okay. So, and then in uh, Punjab region, Punjab region, Lala Rajpatrai and Bhagat Singh. Lala Rajpatrai and Bhagat Singh. In Bengal region, in Bengal region, Subhash Chandra Bose. In UP region, Chacha. UP region, Chacha. Make it as UP and Bihar region, Chacha and Rajendra Prasad. Chacha and Rajendra Prasad. Okay. So, They were the leaders, like it was uh, there all across India. Wherever Simon went, there was opposition. Okay, and the entire India, uh, irrespective of the religion, the professions, different classes, they all came together to oppose Simon. So, this eventually took the form of mass movement. They had not expected this, but see what did Britishers assume that Indians are divided, no clear, definite leader, no clear or definite objective. But as soon as Simon came, that uh, like that humiliation, no Indian representation in Simon Commission, that humiliation unified all of us against Simon Commission. So that eventually took the form of mass movement. Britishers had not anticipated this and therefore they were shocked. And uh, at the same time, right on, in December 1927, in December 1927, Muslim League gave Delhi proposals. Muslim League gave Delhi proposals to INC as the basis for their future cooperation. Delhi proposals to INC as the basis for their future cooperation. Okay, so what are Delhi proposals? One third representation to Muslims in Central Legislative Assembly, residuary powers to the provinces, residuary powers to the provinces, separation of Sindh from Bombay, separation of Sindh from Bombay province. The Karachi region, that was also the part of Bombay province. Not only this Maharashtra, Gujarat, even the Karachi region, it was also the part of Bombay province. Separation of Sindh from Bombay. Come on. Equal powers to the legislatures of Baloch and NWFP. Equal powers to the legislatures of Baloch and NWFP. Okay, they were the frontier province, means bordering provinces. Therefore, Britishers, uh, for the sake of defense, they are not given much powers to these legislatures. But these were Muslim dominant uh, provinces. Therefore, Muslim League wanted to demand equal powers to these provinces also. Sindh also, that was the reason. Because in Sindh region, majority were Muslim masses. So, they wanted creation of Sindh for that purpose. So, they told, if you agree to these things, they told INC, if you agree to these things and if you help us to inculcate these things in the upcoming constitution, then we are going to cooperate with you. So, INC told, okay, we will decide, wait. So, 1928 February, right now, 1928 February, all parties conference, 
met all parties conference met and decided to demand dominion status i mean uh, make it as like self government decided to demand self government and also responsible government self government and also responsible government okay so india should be ruled by indians the government should be responsible to the masses so they demanded this okay and now next point see britishers were angered Uh, due to severe opposition anti semitic agitation and all britishers were angered therefore read on in may 1928 may 1928 the secretary of state the secretary of state burkan head was angered due to the anti semitic agitation was angered due to the anti semitic agitation and challenged indians and challenged indians challenged indians to draft the constitution on their own to draft the constitution on their own and it should be acceptable to all it should be acceptable to all hindus muslims peasants laborers everybody should accept to it so almost two challenges are there one you have to draft the constitution or one second one it should be acceptable to all so let's talk as a response as a response motilal nehru committee was set up motilal nehru committee was set up consisting of tej bahadur sapru subhash chandra bose g r pradhan ali imam an anglo indian ani a n e y motilal nehru committee was set up consisting of these members tej bahadur sapro subhash chandra bos gr pradhan ali imam and ani okay the committee was set up and this committee submitted its report in august 1928 and this committee submitted its report in august 1928 and is famously known as what nehru report and is famously known as nehru report so what are the elements of nehru report first point dominion status dominion status second one responsible government at center and the provinces responsible government at the center and the provinces center and provinces secularism secularism fourth one residuary powers to the center residuary powers to the center <coughs> resolution on fundamental rights fundamental rights including universal adult franchise including universal adult franchise formation of linguistic provinces formation of linguistic provinces
okay so these things were demanded by motilal nehru committee fine so <coughs> now the deliberation started on what was proposed by motilal nehru committee so all parties they started discussing on the things that were proposed by motilal nehru so the discussion went on for 3 to 4 months everybody has the reservation fine so muslim league started objecting we already given you delhi proposals nothing in delhi proposals is there in motilal nehru report so what were there in uh, delhi proposals one third reservation residuary powers to the provinces but here it is given to center muslim league became angry guru i supported you in anti semer agitation and now you are not including my own demands in the report is this fair so hindu mahasabha like muslim league was demanding one third reservation hindu mahasabha was de demanding two third reservation for hindus what will happen to this country understood so all these demands went on there were a lot of uh, what do you call verbal spats between the leaders and all finally right on in december 1928 december 1928 all parties conference met again all parties conference met again at calcutta and jinnah proposed series of amendments to nehru report jinnah proposed series of amendments to nehru report known as calcutta amendments known as calcutta amendments <coughs> so what is calcutta amendments first three points of madras sorry the delhi proposals three things of delhi proposals plus one more demand was there what were calcutta amendments three things proposed by jinnah in delhi proposals those three things and there is a fourth point repeat the same three points and there is a fourth point fourth point is right on directly right on the fourth point right on delhi proposals plus one more point fourth point reservation to muslims in the provinces where they are in minority in the provinces where they are in minority and proportional representation and proportional representation wherever they are in majority wherever they are in majority okay wherever they are in minority they want 33% reservation wherever they are in majority they want proportional representation if their population is 60% they want 60% seats to be reserved in the assembly when their population is 10% they want 33% seats to be reserved so jinnah proposed these amendments and he wanted this to be considered very seriously right on next line also jinnah stated that in return for acceptance of calcutta amendments also jinnah stated that in return for acceptance of calcutta amendments muslim league muslim league would give up the separate electorate okay they would give up separate electorate first and the last instance where muslim league was ready to give up separate electorate first and the last instance okay so now he wanted to increase the seriousness of his uh, proposals therefore what do you think will happen will they accept it or reject it reject it right now they told very simple thing jinna either you take reservation or proportional representation either you take this or take that but combo offer and all not available fine if you want to take reservation everywhere or else take proportional representation everywhere but a mix of both not available 
So, right on. They were rejected. And therefore, and therefore, Jinnah took up the communal path. Took up the communal path. And in March 1929, and in March 1929, he gave his 14 point demands. He gave his 14 point demands. Okay. March 1929, he gave his 14 point demands. Right. These 14 points are very important for Pakistan Public Service Commission examination. <laughs> UPSC won't ask that, don't worry. Communal in nature, not like very relevant to us, don't worry. Okay. But still, you want to have like plan B and all, I'm very sorry. You can read that also. What happened? No, sir. No. He's telling he's going to take citizenship. <laughs> it's a lengthy process. Naturalization will take around seven years, no? So, by then, what if you are age barred? <laughs> Try raw. <laughs> now we have to write the raw entrance. <laughs> Even lengthier process. <laughs> leave it. Okay, leave it. I am more prone. I mean, more prone to get deviated than you are. So, uh, let me confine myself to the lecture. Fine. So, there is a small uh, proposal to you all. Friday, we are going to have the morning session. Are you okay with 7 a.m.? 7. I will study it alone. No problem. Okay. I can teach alone in the class. I am like, nowadays I am used to that also. <laughs> Online you can watch. You can like, get up at 7.30 only, you can start watching. You can keep watching and come to class. No issues. Fine. The class will go up to like 11, that's all. 11, 11, 15, that will be the end. Fine. So one day you will have to adjust. You have to bear the difficulties. Fine. A time will not be able to complete the syllabus. Not possible. <laughs> Saturday will not be here in Delhi only. Friday noon, I am leaving. So that's the reason. I want to complete everything, do justice to whatever is promised. That's the reason. I'll have to do it. Okay. So it depends on what progress we make today and tomorrow. If we make like lot of progress, <laughs> then <laughs> not needed to take a session from 7 a.m. We can take from 8 only. But if lot of things are pending, then we have to take up from 7. So that's inevitable. Okay. I appreciate your cooperation. So, we'll see how it goes. Fine. There is another class after this man. Only one classroom. So, in this classroom, different batches are running. So, I don't have that autonomy to extend and all. Already I have taken up a lot of time of others. So, usually the sessions, uh, it will be there for like three, three and a half hours. But mine? Five. I can take up to 8 hours, no issues. I am used to it. <laughs> but thing is, uh, the classroom is not free. Okay. So, we we'll have to do it. Fine. Hey, one day, one hour you cannot spare. You cannot come one hour only. Every day you take one hour only. What is it proposal? You can come. Oh, then come. No need of discussion only. Come. You can also sit for 8 hours. Oh my God. <laughs> Bite Jawaj, class ke baad. 
पर्सनली सिखाऊंगा मेंटरशिप कैबिन सर दे नट इज अवेलेबल सो यू कैन टेक फ्रॉम फाइव एम ओ Fine. Enough of all these things. <laughs> I made a wrong decision to bring the things before you people. So <laughs> you took ten minutes out of class time. No issues. Now coming back. Okay. Sir, who was the president of this all party staff? No president and all. It was just a meeting. No need of any president and all. It was a meeting. There are some members of INC who are going to attend this meeting. There are some members of Muslim League. Sitting around together, it's kind of a discussion, man. There is no need of uh, having a president for every meeting. Was there any of the... It is not a session, man. <laughs> Five people meeting together and discussing. For that, there is no need of any presiding officer. Right? Usually, when you and your friends meet to discuss something, will you make someone as presiding officer? it was a mutual exchange of thoughts i want this you want this so okay let's discuss over it uh, that was a kind of an, i mean that was the nature of the meeting no need of any presiding officer for this this is not an assembly session it is just a meeting of some like minded political parties for the future of indian constitution that's all okay <coughs> what was i telling Communal part, 14 points. Okay. So now, on the other hand, write down. Calcutta session of INC, 1928. Calcutta session of INC, December 1928. Presided by Motila Nehru. Accepted Motila Nehru report. Calcutta session of INC, 1928. Presided by Motila Nehru. Accepted Motila Nehru report. No nepotism in that. Okay. This is better. After independence, things gets even worst. Bharat Ratna, Nehruji, for your commendable service to the nation. Thank you, Nehruji. <laughs> Next generation also, same thing. <laughs> that was given by someone else. He did not give it to himself. Better. If you give it to himself, then that is what I am talking about. Others giving to you, it's fine. If you give it to yourself, no. He did not give it to himself, man. Who gave? <laughs> See, even if party gives, it's fine, man. If you give it to him, <laughs> understood? <laughs> Motila Nehruji, please accept this report. Wonderful work, Motila Nehruji. <laughs> understood? That is the problem I'm telling, talking about. If it is given to you by the party or someone else, it's fine to an extent. Understood? There is a fundamental difference. Okay, leave it. And now, right on. The younger elements of INC, like uh, Bose and Chacha, unhappy with Nehru report. Bose and Chacha, unhappy with Nehru report. Especially the demand of dominion status. Fine. They gave one year deadline. They gave one year deadline for accepting Nehru report. They gave one year deadline for accepting Nehru report.
and when nothing happened December 1929 Lahore session Purna Swaraj resolution fine Purna Swaraj resolution not only that during Purna Swaraj resolution he also told we are going to launch CDM under the leadership of Gandhi during Purna Swaraj resolution he told Purna Swaraj is going to be the goal and objective of INC 26 January is going to be the first independence day they always had a tricolor flag on the banks of river Ravi and he also told INC is going to launch CDM under the leadership of Gandhi ok so these many things were told in the Lahore session now Gandhi came Gandhi told beta stop he told to Chacha stop so he told see Purna Swaraj and all not very suitable for this time let me negotiate with the British so Gandhi told Britishers see Purna Swaraj is very difficult for you to accept I know that so I don't want you to accept Purna Swaraj also instead of that I am going to give you 11 points instead of Purna Swaraj I am going to give you a diluted version of it accept that Gandhi gave his 11 points fine so write down 11 point demands of Gandhi fine in bracket a middle path middle path fine <coughs> middle path proposed to British as an alternative to Pona Swaraj as an alternative to Pona Swaraj Gandhi himself told if you accept this Pona Swaraj I mean if you accept this 11 point demands you won't even demand for Pona Swaraj because these 11 points constitutes the essence of Swaraj according to Gandhi these 11 points constituted the essence of Swaraj ok so these 11 points are very important very important so I will tell it you do not have to write it down it is there in the handouts you can read it or whatever books you read it is already there let me tell it to you first thing <coughs> reduction of rent and revenue land rent and revenue by half imagine if you are paying 10 percent rent or 50 percent rent it is going to be reduced by half second thing abolition of salt tax third thing abolition of monopoly on the production of salt only government was supposed to manufacture the salt fourth thing total prohibition prohibition means ban on liquor fifth thing reserve the coastal shipping for Indians because again it was a Europeans monopoly you moving from like one coastal town to another coastal town so Malapuram to Tiruvananthapuram same state so that is coastal shipping so that was again in the control of Europeans Gandhi told give it to Indians and then there was a reduce rupee to sterling exchange ratio sterling pound was their currency so Gandhi told reduce the exchange ratio so that was one thing and then Gandhi told release the non-violent political prisoners those were arrested during NCM many of them were still in jail so Gandhi told reduce the non-violent political prisoners ok so like this there were multiple demands amend the arms act and allow the popular control of arms allow peaceful picketing so Gandhi demanded 11 such things and based on these 11 point demands he wanted to have talks with the viceroy Irwin but viceroy Irwin refused to meet Gandhi Gandhi gave the deadline of one month for accepting and implementing these 11 point demands Gandhi waited for two months Irwin did not respond and finally Gandhi decided to launch CDM on the issue of salt ok 12th March 1930 fine no response to Gandhi's 11 point demands by Irwin Gandhi decided to launch CDM on the issue of salt ok so now CDM you all know started with Dandi March 12th March 1932 6th April 12th March 1932 6th April Sabarmati Ashram to Dandi fine it started with the disobedience of salt laws it is also known as salt satyagraha it is also known as salt satyagraha what it primarily involved 
first thing non payment of salt tax and violation of salt act of 1882 non payment of salt tax second point violation of salt act of 1882 what does it say monopoly monopoly on the production of salt violation of salt act of 1882 it talks about monopoly on the production of salt okay so now it did not only confine itself to salt there was disobedience of forest laws disobedience of forest laws in the forest areas fine and there was disobedience of land rent and revenue policies in different parts of country in coastal areas they i mean they boycotted the salt laws in forest areas they violated the forest laws in agricultural areas in the plain region they violated the land revenue policies so whatever was accessible to you the people did that okay in tamil nadu region right now in madras region in madras region cr led the salt march cr led the salt march okay from where to where trichy to vedaraniyam trichy t r i c h y to vedaraniyam it is a coastal area he went there c r c rajagopalachari raja c r das is different c r is different c rajagopalachari and c r das is from bengal not from madras 25 only you passed away i wrote it on the board also the satma cannot come back and <laughs> do the salt march okay so okay and now uh, next one k kelappan k kelappan k e l a p p a n K Kelappan led the salt march in Malabar region. In Malabar region, okay. In Karnataka region, salt satyagraha was led by salt satyagraha. In Karnataka region, salt satyagraha was led by Karnad Sadashiv Rao. Karnad. Sadashiva Rao and Ankola was the nerve center Ankola was the nerve center okay Gandhi visited Ankola Gandhi visited Ankola and urged the nation to follow ankola method and urged the nation to follow ankola method organized violation of salt laws was happening in that region it is a coastal region in karnataka okay will you stop in uh, sirsi and siddapur of karnataka forest laws were violated Sirsi and Siddapur region of Karnataka forest laws were violated. Okay. Sirsi has got a GI tag, betel nut. Sorry, betel leaf, betel leaf. That palm leaf is there. No? That's got a GI tag as well. Okay. Moist deciduous forest. This region. Tropical moist deciduous forest. Okay. that lion tail macaw and all it is found in this region siddapur sorry okay and then uh, 
मेडम इन गुजरात रीजन गुजरात रीजन नो टैक्स कैंपेन नो टैक्स कैंपेन वॉज हेल्ड इन बारदोली एंड केड़ा नो टैक्स कैंपेन वॉज हेल्ड इन बारदोली एंड केड़ा रिमेंबर बारदोली इन नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी टू ओनली देवर इंट्रोड्यूस टू दट नो टैक्स कैंपेन ओके स्टॉप दर्साना साल ट्रेड दर्साना डी एच ए आर एस एन ए दर्साना साल ट्रेड साल रेड आर एडी लेड बाय सरोजिनी नायडू मणिलाल सन ऑफ गांधी फाइन सो It was one of the unfulfilled dream of Gandhi to raid the salt work, but Gandhi was arrested before that. So Sarojini Naidu raided that. Okay. So, and then next one in uh, NWFP region. NWFP region. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and his red shirts. and is red shirts in bracket non violent volunteers non violent volunteers red shirts doesn't mean violence okay they were also known as kudai kitmatgars kudai kitmatgars kuda means god kitmatgars means servants kudai kitmatgars servants of god hmm Frontier Gandhi, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. We'll come to it. Wait. Okay. Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan and his red shirts. They led the CDM in that region. Okay. Gandhi went to NWFP and invited Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan to preside the session of INC. But Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan politely refused. And after independence, he was the first non-Indian to receive Bharat Ratna. next was nelson mandela but he was the first indian to receive bharat ratna okay so and is known as frontier gandhi and k kelapan is known as gandhi of kerala k kelapan second point you wrote down no is known as gandhi of kerala okay next point in up and bihar in up and bihar there was no rent no revenue campaign no rent no revenue campaign supported by both peasants and zamindars no revenue campaign supported by both peasants and zamindars next point in assam in assam the masses march from silet to nova kali in assam the masses marched from silet to nova kali fine so 1946 there was a very big massacre there nova kali massacre Silet to Nova Kali, and broke the salt law. And broke the salt law. Okay. Will stop. Also, there was anti Cunningham circular campaign. Also, there was anti Cunningham circular campaign. Anti Cunningham circular campaign. So there was something called as Cunningham Circular. So it demanded written assurances of good behavior. Right now, it demanded written assurances of good behavior of their children by the parents. 
of Assam, written assurances of good behavior of their children submitted by the parents of Assam. Submitted by the parents. So parents has to give a written affidavit that my children, I mean my son or daughter is not going to take part in any nationalist activity. So this was done to suppress the nationalist activity but ultimately there was a movement against this. So it backfired. So students started protesting against this and they started participating more and more in the national movement. Okay. And then in Manipur Nagaland region, last point, in Manipur Nagaland region, Rani Gaidi Niliu, Manipur and Nagaland region, Rani Gaidi Niliu led the CDM. Chacha gave her the title Rani. Okay. In bracket, she was the leader of Hiraka cult. Hiraka cult. H E R A K A. Hiraka cult. Fine. So, again, uh, this uh, CDM was far more successful than all other earlier moments. It built tremendous pressure on the Britishers. Right on. Next point. There was large scale boycott of, there was large scale boycott of British goods, revenue payments. There was large scale boycott of British goods, revenue payments. Leading to severe losses. not only to the British government, but also to the British industries, but also to the British industries, not only to the British government, but also to the British industries. And therefore, the government came under heavy pressure. They have to do something. Okay? Indians are boycotting everything. Economic losses, you cannot bear that. The strength is economy, the strength is their industry, their industries are getting hurt. So they have to somehow end this. Okay. So write down one more point. Capitalists led by Fiki, capitalists led by Fiki supported CDM. initially supported CDM initially and they also boycotted and they also boycotted the first round table conference along with INC. They also boycotted first round table conference along with INC. Okay. So, law or session only Chacha told we are going to boycott this round table conference and all. If you don't respect us, we don't come to meeting and all. Law or session only Chacha told. So, Purna Swaraj resolution, independence resolution, plan to start CDM and also boycott of RTC. All these four things were there in law or resolution of Chacha. Okay. So, now Britishers were forced to negotiate with Gandhi, but he was imprisoned. In January 1931, right now. Jan 1931, Gandhi and top leaders of INC were released unconditionally from jail. Gandhi and top leaders of INC were released unconditionally from jail. Leading to, leading to Gandhi Irwin Pact or Delhi Pact. Leading to Gandhi Irwin Pact or Delhi Pact. 5th March 1931. 5th March 
1931. Okay. So here, right down below that, Gandhi accepted to take part in second RTC. Gandhi accepted to take part in second RTC and suspend CDM. And suspend CDM. Next line. British acceptor to restore the lands, to restore the lands, remit the fines, restore the line, restore the lands, remit the fines, release the prisoners, release the non-violent prisoners. Readmit, readmit the government servants and students. Readmit the government servants and students fine. Full stop. Also allowed some coastal tribal community to manufacture salt for personal consumption. allowed the postal tri coastal tribal community to manufacture the salt for personal consumption. Okay. So, this was what they agreed. Next line. However, British did not agree. British did not agree. First point, to commute the death sentence of Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev, to commute the death sentence of Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev. Second point, public enquiry into police atrocities during CDM. Public inquiry into police atrocities during CDM. Okay, these two things they did not agree. So now Gandhi went to second round table conference. So you all know what is round table conference? Right on RTC heading. There were three rounds, three rounds of it. First RTC, 1930, INC did not participate. First RTC, INC did not participate, 1930. Okay. See, it is a meeting between Indian and the British representatives. Okay. Second RTC. 1931, 1931, Gandhi was the sole representative of INC, Gandhi was the sole representative of INC and Srinivasa Iyengar was his political advisor and Srinivasa Iyengar was his political advisor. Stop. Talks broke down on the issue of separate electorate. Talks broke down on the issue of separate electorate. Talks broke down on the issue of separate electorate. Third RTC. Nineteen thirty one. Sorry, nineteen. 1932, 1932, INC did not take part, INC did not take part, okay, as it was banned, 
INC did not take part as it was banned. When Gandhi tried to, when Gandhi tried to revive CDM, when Gandhi tried to revive CDM after returning from second RTC, when Gandhi tried to revive CDM after returning from second RTC. See, Gandhi's demands were not met. Gandhi was dissatisfied. So, he came back to India, wanted to restart CDM. So, that is when Britishers arrested Gandhi and banned INC only. INC was declared as illegal organization. So, any activity of INC is going to be illegal. Members of INC are going to be criminals. So, that is what happened. British government went up to the extremes to suppress the national movement. Okay. So, now, right on, below RTC, uh, few things. This was the first instance, this was the first instance, both Indians and British were meeting as equals, first instance where both Indians and British were meeting as equals, second point, there was Labour Party government during first RTC. There was Labour Party government during first RTC and Conservative Party government during second and third. So what will be the outcome? Gone. Labour Party government during the first RTC and Conservative Party government during second and third. Okay. Next point. Sarojini Naidu attended second RTC as a representative of Indian women. Sarojini Naidu attended second RTC as a representative of Indian women. Not as a member of INC. Gandhi was the sole representative. Okay. Next point. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Tej Bahadur Sapru, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Tej Bahadur Sapru, M. R. Jayakar, Jahanara Begum, Jahanara Begum, attended all three sessions of INC. Also, also, there was Sir Mirza Ismail, Diwan of Mysore. Sir Mirza Ismail, Diwan of Mysore. He also attended all three sessions of INC. Okay. So, Tej Bahadur Sapur was the leader of liberals, M. R. Jaikar was the leader of Hindus, Be Janara Begum was a representative of Indian women, Dr. V. R. Ambedkar as you all know, representative of depressed classes and Sir Mirza Ismail was representing the princely state of Mysore. So, these people attended all three sessions of INC. Huh? That's what I told. Oh, RTC. RTC. I was checking whether you were uh, alert or not. So, all three sessions of RTC. So, second session of RTC, the main reason why it failed was the issue of separate electorate. Gandhi told the separate electorate should be removed. It should be removed. Sikh leaders, they agreed. Okay, we are ready to give up. Gandhi looked at the Muslim leaders. They told we are not giving up. We are not giving up. We want separate electorates. Jinnah, he stood up. Hey, last time I gave you the opportunity. Calcutta amendments. Remember, you did not accept it. Now you are asking us to give it up. We won't give it up. Then Ambedkar stood up. Ambedkar told, see, we want separate electorate. Because historically we have been subjugated, suppressed, no representation, nobody to voice our concerns. So, 
at least we should get some assured representation. We want separate electorates. So the Muslim League and many other political parties, they supported Ambedkar. They told, yes, it should be given. Gandhi told, see, separate electorate is not the solution to get the representation. Fine. It's a evil. But by then, there was conservative party government. So you know their approach towards India and Indians. So they did not want Gandhi to succeed. They created hurdles and Gandhi was hurt. He came back empty-handed. He came back empty-handed. Fine. So Gandhi understood. It was the conspiracy by the Britishers to make him fail in England. Therefore, as soon as he came, he sent a request letter to the Viceroy Willingdon. By now, Irvin was called back and Irvin, Willingdon was the uh, new viceroy, he sent a request letter to Willingdon, I want to meet you. Willingdon did not entertain. Gandhi waited for few days. There was no response from the viceroy. So Gandhi decided I am going to start the second phase of CDM. As soon as Gandhi announced it, Gandhi was arrested. Congress was declared as illegal. Lot of ordinances were brought into force, suppressing the freedom of press, freedom of assembly, freedom of uh, speech and expression. Lot of things were brought into force and the entire country became like a jail. Fine. So, this is what British did. And see, after CDM, no, first phase of CDM, Gandhi signed Gandhi Irvin Pact. When you compare the Gandhi Irvin Pact with 11 point demands of Gandhi, you will not find many matches. Gandhi failed. Gandhi Irvin Pact, Gandhi failed. There was a lot of dissatisfaction against Gandhi because Gandhi could not get the commutation of sentences of Bhagat Singh, Rajguru and Sukhdev. That was the popular demand of most of the Indians. We wanted them to leave. But Gandhi could not get it done. So a lot of dissatisfaction against Gandhi. Despite having the upper hand, you could not do that. So a lot of dissatisfaction. But Sardar Patel appeared in support of Gandhi. Even a lot of congressmen were also unhappy. So Chacha himself told, Chacha himself told, Gandhi Irvin Pact is an unconditional surrender. Subhash Chandra Bose told, Gandhi as a political leader has failed. A lot of dissatisfaction against Gandhi after signing of Gandhi Irvin Pact. You had the upper hand, but you did not take advantage of it. You were in a situation to dictate the terms to the Britishers, but instead you heard their terms and you agreed to it. Fine. So what was the central issue of CDM? Salt tax, abolition of monopoly and the production. At least those two things were satisfied. No. Then how do you call CDM a success? This was the question by Chacha and Bose and lot of Indians. So, there was a lot of dissatisfaction against Gandhi and in this situation, in this critical situation, Patel supported Gandhi. He told, don't worry, Gandhi is our only hope. Gandhi is the right person. So, we will send him to second round table conference and he will get us whatever we lost. Whatever we lost now in Gandhi Irwin Pact now. So, those things, I assure you that Gandhi will get succeeded in second round table conference. And by the time Gandhi landed in England, Labour Party government collapsed and Conservative Party came to power. And they made sure Gandhi does not succeed. Gandhi came back, he started second phase of CDM and again that was a failure because Britishers were prepared to handle it now. They were prepared to handle it. It was brutally suppressed. Gandhi was jailed and that is when Britishers went for the next phase of the divide and rule policy. Partition of Bengal. Formation of Muslim League, separate communal electorate, extension of separate communal electorate in 1919 and now they wanted to extend it to the depressed classes as well. Okay, That is what they announced as a form of communal award. Communal award. Okay, Right now, 1932, communal award. Okay. So now, what is communal award? First point, conferring the status of minorities on the depressed classes, conferring the status of minorities to the depressed classes. Who gave this communal award? Ramsey MacDonald, August 1932. Ramsey MacDonald the British PM, August 1932. He himself made this announcement. 
conferring the status of minority to the depressed classes. Second point, extending the separate electorate, extending the separate electorate to the depressed classes. Third point, third point, reserving some constituencies to Marathas in, in Bombay Presidency region. Reserving some constituencies for Marathas in Bombay Presidency region. Fine. So, response by Gandhi, you know, response by Gandhi. First point, fast unto death in Yeravada jail of Pune, fast unto death, Yeravada jail of Pune, fine. Second point, he started All India Anti-Untouchability League in 1932, he started All India Anti-Untouchability League in 1932. They can ask you which of the following organizations were formed by Gandhi. All India Anti-Untouchability League in 1932. Third point. Harijan Sevak Sangh in 1933. Harijan Sevak Sangh in 1933. Fourth point. Harijan Newspaper in 1934. Harijan newspaper in 1934. Next point, Harijan tour. Harijan tour. In bracket, Harijan movement. Harijan movement. The objective was to empower the depressed classes. Harijan movement. After his release. 1934 he was released. Harijan movement after his release. He toured the nation, he visited Harijan colonies, right? he stayed with them, created awareness against untouchability, all those things. Okay? So these initiatives were done by Gandhi. Next line, negotiation between Gandhi and Ambedkar. Negotiations between Gandhi and Ambedkar by Madan Mohan Malviya, M.C. Raja. Madan Mohan Malviya, M.C. Raja, and even Rabindranath Tagore, Madan Mohan Malviya, M.C. Raja, and even Rabindranath Tagore. As a result, Pune Pact was signed. As a result, Pune Pact was signed. Okay. September 1932. September 1932. What is Pune Pact? Read on. Reservation instead of separate electorate. Reservation to depressed classes instead of separate electorate. As a result, 18% reservation in Central Legislative Assembly, 18% reservation in Central Legislative Assembly, comma, 140 plus seats to depressed classes all across the nation, 140 plus seats to depressed classes all across the provinces. For central, 18% seats. For provincial legislature, all across the provinces, 140 plus seats were given to them. In bracket, you can write, separate electorate gave them 70 seats. Separate electorates gave them 70 seats. But Pune Pact is giving them 140 plus seats. Fine. 
Next point, reservation, reservation in government jobs plus educational aid, aid means support, educational aid, AID to the students of depressed classes. Third point. This agreement was valid for 10 years. Agreement valid for 10 years. Last point, it was signed by, it was signed between, it was signed between Dr. B.R. Ambedkar and Madan Mohan Malviya, not Gandhi. So signed between Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and Madan Mohan Malviya. In bracket you can write not Gandhi, underline it. Okay. Generally we consider as an agreement between Gandhi and Ambedkar. It is not. This was signed between Gandhi, I mean Ambedkar and Madan Mohan Malviya. Okay. So this was the case. And then Gandhi, after this release from jail in 1934, he told I am going to retire again political retirement. He refused to renew the membership of INC. He told I don't have money. I am not going to join INC. I am not going to stay in INC. So, he confined himself to his ashram and also this uh, Arijan movement. Empowering the Arijan, promoting the constructive work, Kadi, Charaka, sanitation, hygiene. So, he started touring the nation. He started confining himself to this ashram things. So, he stayed away from the mainstream politics. So, in that moment, we got the Government of India Act 1935, Government of India 1935, handout is already there, it has already been given to you, one handout about Government of India Act 1935. So now let me tell you, organically whatever we studied, I will tell you the same things, okay, in the same format so that it will help you to remember. First thing, with regard to representation, in 1919, what we got? Bicameralism, the concept of upper house, the concept of lower house. Okay? And uh, in 1935, this bicameralism was introduced only at the center. Upper house, indirect election, lower house, direct election. Upper house, five year tenure, lower house, three year tenure. This we knew. Okay. So, this was the case. And then with regard to like Indian representation, we got more and more representation. With regard to elections, direct elections were introduced. So, voting rights were provided. Separate electorate was introduced. I mean, was expanded to six Christians and Anglo-Indians and with regard to the financial powers or the budgetary reforms, you all know diarchy was introduced, provincial budget was separated for the first time, okay. And with regard to VEC, three members were taken. Hope you remember all these things. And then there were other miscellaneous provisions. Continuation of emergency, veto and ordinance making powers of governor and viceroy. After, yes. And then uh, <coughs> 10 years later, this act is going to be reviewed. Central Public Service Commission. Office of High Commissioner was set up. Fine. And the members of India office, the salaries were stopped. I mean, they stopped paying the salaries to them using Indians money. Okay, so all these things, miscellaneous provisions were there. And now, <coughs> 1935, the bicameralism, earlier it was introduced only at the central level, now introduced at the provincial level also. Some provinces got two houses, upper house and lower house. Okay, it was introduced at the provincial level also, not all provinces, only some provinces, bigger provinces. Bombay, 
Madras, Bengal, they got bicameral legislatures. Okay? And with regard to with regard to the bicameralism at center, with regard to the bicameralism at center, the strength was increased. Both upper house and lower house, the strength was increased. But some systems, some systems were changed. For example, upper house direct election, lower house indirect election. <coughs> How it happens? It happens, that's all. Don't go into too much of details. At central level, upper house direct election, lower house indirect election. It was done. And earlier, Dayaki was at the provincial level. No? Now, they made it at the central level. They made it at the central level. Now, the separate electorate, it was extended to women and labor also. And in that, they even mentioned depressed classes. Though, it had no effect because of Puna Pact. But it was mentioned, separate electorate was extended to depressed classes, women and labor. Fine. See, separate electorate is not extended to peasants. Don't assume. It was extended to labor and women. Some constituencies were reserved for women. That was the main demand of Jahanara Begum. She attended all the artists. No, she demanded women should get representation. We are not getting the due representation. Give us separate electorate. So, it was done. And there was direct elections, it continued. But now, the conditions and qualifications, it came down a little. It has reduced. The conditions and qualifications to get the voting rights, it was reduced. So, more number of people got the voting rights. More number of people got the voting rights. And, <coughs> and there was something called as, see in province there was diarchy, no? Now, at provinces, they will introduce something called as provincial autonomy. Provincial autonomy. So, earlier I told you, till 1919, till 1919, even the financial powers of provinces was also with the center. In 1919, what happened? Center, province. The budgets were separated. And in province, what they did? They introduced diarchy. Reserved list, transferred list, that phenomenon. In 1935, what they did? They did this. The concept of seven schedule. Today, whatever we have. Center, concurrent and provincial. And now, what they did? With regard to central list. They introduced hierarchy. Now, central list will be divided into reserve list and transfer list. And with regard to provinces, with regard to provinces, they introduced something called as provincial autonomy. They introduced something called as provincial autonomy. So, whatever subjects are there in the province, provincial list, provinces are totally autonomous. They can do whatever they want. Education, health, labor welfare, law and order, revenue, justice administration, they can do whatever they want. They need not ask Viceroy also. They need not talk to anyone also. See, usually this was the hierarchy, you know. Governor of provinces. They were under the control of Viceroy. And Viceroy was under the supervision of Secretary of State. And Secretary of State was under the supervision of Parliament and Crown. This was the system, no? This was how it used to work. But now, this was earlier. And now what happened? As per the Act of 1935, the governor directly derived his power and authority from the Crown and the Parliament of England. He directly derived, he was appointed and directly derived his authority from the Crown and the Parliament of England. This is as per the Act of 1935. So, he is not a subordinate to Viceroy or Secretary of State anymore. With regard to anything mentioned in the provincial list, he can make 
autonomous decisions without consulting the viceroy or without even talking to secretary of state because it derives directly the power from crown and the parliament understood this arrangement happened as per the act of 1935 this is what we call as provincial autonomy okay governor became completely autonomous with regard to everything that is mentioned in the provincial list understood and now as per the system of provincial autonomy as per the system of provincial autonomy again provinces had again the provinces had two set of subjects this is kind of informal uh, differentiation okay so governor controlled around 40% of budget 40% of resources and since there are direct elections there will be elected ministers there will be elected ministers they will control around 60% of budget not 100% we, will, we are getting we are getting around 60% fine and governor and viceroy they continue to have veto ordinance and emergency powers so they can do anything they want veto ordinance and emergency powers and on top of it there was one extraordinary power there was one extraordinary power what was it governor can suspend the elected government and can run the government indefinitely today whatever article 356 we have no president's rule president's rule with indefiniteness no limited period fine governor can suspend the elected government and can run the administration indefinitely if the elected ministers does not listen to them he can do it okay this was the case so this is one uh, like extraordinary feature of government of india act 1935 and again residuary powers were given to viceroy so jinna demanded it to be given to the provinces but this act gave it to the viceroy okay and then uh, there are a lot of uh, miscellaneous things like sindh was separated from bombay sindh was separated from bombay bihar was separated from orissa bihar and orissa were separated they were given uh, individual provincial assemblies reorganization thing happened okay reorganization so what was the reorganization sindh from bombay orissa and bihar burma from british india Burma was separated from British India. All this reorganization happened in the Act of <coughs> 1935. Okay, and then a lot of organizations also came into existence. Federal Court of India, uh, RBI, Federal Public Service Commission, Joint Public Service Commission. A lot of organizations came into existence, and also uh, the Office of Council of India was abolished. council of india was abolished okay so all these things are the main features of government of india act 1935 so now if you look at it we are basing this on four to five important things first thing it is about legislature bicameralism continued but now it was given to provinces also some provinces and the nature of bicameralism changed upper house became directly elected body lower house became indirectly elected body and the strength of both the houses also increased secondly it is about indian representation obviously indian representation increased because the number of nominated members decreased and number of elected members increased thirdly with regard to election direct elections continued in the country more people got the right to vote separate electorates was 
extended to women, labor, and also depressed classes. Whereas with regard to depressed classes, it had no effect because of Pune Pact, but still they mentioned it in the act. Okay, more people got the right to vote, and women and labor do not forget it. It is a PYQ, women, labor they can ask it. Okay, peasants not included, capital is not included. Okay, so now the next thing is with regard to budgetary powers. So 1919, first time provincial and central budget was separated, and now the concept of three list, central, concurrent, and provincial. In 1919, diarchy was introduced at the provinces, and now provincial autonomy was introduced in the provinces, and diarchy was shifted to center. What is provincial autonomy? So provinces are totally autonomous with regard to anything that is mentioned in the provincial list. Governor will be a autonomous authority. So till 1935, governor was kind of subordinate to viceroy. But now, after 1935, it derives its power and authority directly from the crown. With regard to anything mentioned in the provincial list, with regard to provincial list, he need not explain anything to viceroy also, secretary of state also. He'll say, "I can directly call your boss." Fine. That was the authority. And governor had four extraordinary functions: veto, emergency. ordinance making power this was synonymous with even viceroy also viceroy also had this veto emergency and ordinance making power but governor had one extraordinary function he can suspend the elected government of the province and run the administration indefinitely and even if there is elected government they did not get the complete control over the resources of the province they had only 60% of budget under their control remaining 40% under the control of governor and his executive council okay and then there were a lot of uh, what do you say the bodies that were established you know that the factual things you already know so this is the main thing this is the organic link which i wanted to establish with regard to the act of 1935 also the same base you established this okay you need to remember this revise it multiple times and you will be able to answer any question that comes up from this particular part and please write down in a different coloring or a different pen this is a very important point the general elections in india of 1945-46 of 1945-46 was based on the government of india act was based on the provisions of government of india act based on the provisions of government of india act 1919 okay so it is not 1935 it is 1919 so what do you mean by that voter list the qualifications the delimitation of provinces and all these things will be based on okay act of 1919 not the act of 1935 okay so what was the basis for the act of 1935 on what basis they gave it the sources are the basis of act of 1935 simon committee report the discussions of round table conference and then there was a joint select committee of british parliament that was select i mean that was set up to discuss on simon committee report and there was a white paper on constitutional reform published by the british government white paper means it's authentic statement by the government fine this is the progress this is what we have done this is what we are planning to do it's authentic statement by the government in the parliament okay that is called as white paper so if you lie in the white paper again it will lead to breach of privilege of the members so government cannot lie white paper means it's a very important document so it has to explain everything on the basis of facts so british parliament released the white paper on constitutional reforms in india so there they have told what all we have done till date and what we are planning to do what measures we have taken there they have to highlight everything so in their plan to do in their to do list for india they had included a lot of things they all came here okay so government of india act it led to again uh, the provincial elections of 
based on the act of 1935 government wanted to write down the next point based on the act of 1935 The government conducted the elections to the provincial legislature <coughs> and one very important point I forgot, formation of All India Federation was proposed but it never came into existence. Formation of All India Federation consisting of British provinces and princely states was proposed but it never came into existence because princely states were not ready to join it. Once a king, always a king. No king will ever be ready to give up his divine powers and be, see, now imagine, in a democracy, in a democracy, what is the value of vote of a king? One? What is the value of vote of a beggar? One. Will king accept it? Beggar would be happy. A hey, value of my vote and value of king's vote is same. Beggar would be very happy. But do you think king would be happy with that? Do you think he'll like the equal treatment like other citizens of his territory? No. So no king would be ready to give up his divine powers. So 1935, they proposed the formation of All India Federation. The princely states told, no, we are not going to join it. No matter what, we are not going to join it. So the, con I mean, the proposal of All India Federation failed to materialize because princely states were not ready to join it, okay. So this was also one of the very important proposal, but dominion status also itself was not proposed. So that was the strong demand, no? Charta's demand and his father's demand also, Nehru report, fine. Charta also told, give us dominion status, implement my father's report in one year or else we are going to start CDM. That was also not implemented. Okay. So, during the all parties conference also, during the round table conference also, many people demanded dominion status, but Britishers did not even give that in the act of 1935. Okay. So, now elections were held in 1936-37 to the provincial legislatures. Have you written that? Elections were held in 1936-37 to the provincial legislatures. Again in Congress there were two groups. One group wanted to contest the election, another group was against contesting the elections. Okay? Understood? Britishers have announced the elections. One group was ready to contest the election, another group not ready. They wanted to continue the policy of non cooperation advocated by Gandhi. Fine? Because if you form the government, it is like you are cooperating with the Britishers. You are friends with the Britishers. So that won't send a good message to the people. People will stop believing in you. So for that sake, some people were opposed to contesting in the elections. Whereas another group they told, Guru, CDM has ended in 1932-34. First phase ended in 1931. Second phase ended in 1934. Gandhi after his release from jail, he officially withdrew the second phase of CDM, which was virtually non-existent only. Fine. For his own, what do you call? Satisfaction, he withdrew in 1934, but by then it is already dead. It never took off. On the day of launch only, British has suppressed it completely. Fine. And now, another group told, see, the masses, they are not ready to join and support another mass movement and all. So, it is our responsibility to prepare them by helping them. They have suffered a lot during CDM and all. They are not in a position to fight. So, we have to help them. At the same time, you have to keep the national movement going on. What else to do? There is nothing else to do. Fine. We will try a new method. We will form the government. See, back then with diarchy, only 20% of budget was under our control. We did lot of good work. Right? Our demands led to lot of committees. So, we did lot of good work. Now, we have 60% of budget. We can do phenomenal work. And there is provincial autonomy also. We can do phenomenal work. So, let us take this opportunity. So, again Congress was divided into two groups. One group which wanted to contest, Sri Rajagopalachari was the leader. Another group which did not want to contest, 
Chacha was the leader. Chacha, Rajendra Prasad, Vallabhai Patel, they were the leaders of the group which did not want to contest. Which wanted to contest? C. Rajagopalachari, G. B. Pant, and then there was uh, Krishna Kumar, Krishna Kant or Krishna Kumar, like they were the leaders. Finally, 1936 April, Lucknow session, compromise was reached. Chacha told, contest. 1936 April, Lucknow session, compromise was reached. They were allowed to contest. But, office acceptance was kept pending. You contest, if at all you win, whether to form the government or not, we will see later. You contest. They were allowed to contest, but the question of office acceptance was spent, kept pending for later. Okay. So, next slide. In 6 out of 11 provinces, INC got the majority. 6 out of 11 provinces, INC got the majority. In 2 provinces, it emerged as the largest party. Two provinces it emerged as the largest party. But the decision of government formation was delayed for more than six months. The decision of government formation was delayed for more than six months. due to internal issues okay so one group they told guru we have contested we have won the majority we want to form the government other group told see you have contested you have won but if you form the government it's like cooperating with the british people will lose the faith in us so will not form so now cr was not ready to accept Chacha's view. Chacha was not ready to accept CR's view. There was no top leader. Now both of them called Gandhi. Bus come and resolve the crisis. CR told, I'll walk away. I'll walk away. You keep Congress. I'll form the government. No matter what happens, we'll keep Congress. I mean, we'll form the government. Because see, imagine, contesting the election itself is very difficult. They have contested the election. They won the election. They have got the majority. They had the opportunity to form the government six months ago only. CR would have been already served as the Prime Minister of Madras province for six months. See, as per the Act of 1935, it was not Chief Minister, it was Prime Minister of the provinces. CR would have become the Prime Minister in 1936, 1937, January only. But because of that, it was delayed till June, July. Even after having majority, even after having everything, you are stopped from accepting the office. How will it feel? You are the leader. You are supposed to be the Prime Minister of the province. You are being stopped. How will it feel? CR was frustrated. Now Gandhi came. Everybody told Gandhi their case. CR told his case. Chacha told his case. Now Gandhi, he gave his verdict. He told, CR, you want to form the government now? CR told, yes boss, form. Chacha, you do not want to form now? Yes boss, don't form. <laughs> That's all. If you want to form the government, form. If you don't want to, don't form. Leave it. Matter resolved. Now Chacha was dissatisfied. He told Baba, what is this? You have to tell them that cooperation with British is not very good. Now Gandhi told, oh, okay, I forgot that point. Gandhi <laughs> told, okay. Gandhi gave this word of advice. 
see these are not the powerful positions these are crowns of thorns crowns of thorns kante fine hold on to it lightly and not tightly don't wear it tightly hold on to it lightly he told sir raj i mean rajendra prasad pass the resolution conditional acceptance of office rajendra prasad was about to pass the resolution sir stop bas what is conditional acceptance <laughs> you did not tell us any condition only gandhi told that is the condition <laughs> you want to form the government now or do you want to know what is the condition we will discuss we will elaborately discuss for another 6 months you want to know what is the condition or do you want to form the government now see i told first choice i want to form the government now 6 months already wasted fine 6 months already wasted i want to form the government now gandhi told you will and you will get to know the condition when it is time till then you be you be the pm okay so right on finally after gandhi's interference finally after gandhi's interference rajendra prasad passed the resolution rajendra prasad passed the resolution for conditional acceptance of office rajendra prasad passed the resolution for conditional acceptance of office paving the way for paving the way for the formation of 28 month rule of inc paving the way for the formation of 28 month rule of inc 28 month okay so now <coughs> uh, the contributions of this 28 month uh, government and all it is there in the handouts so i'll briefly tell you what they did they showcased very high moral standards they reduced their own salaries contributed most of their salaries to congress funds they were accessible to the people they were not communal they were secular fine they responded to the demands of the people they did not get carried away by the positions of power so they did not misuse the power for their personal gains or to suppress their opponents so they were very good secondly there was practic they gave the practical taste of independence to the people what is practical taste of independence they removed the bans on various organizations they removed the bans on various newspapers and various books and they promoted the freedom of speech freedom of association they allowed their political opponents in their provinces to protest against them understood they respected others others point also so that showed how liberal how mature how they respected the democratic ideals okay and uh, they also took back the government servants who were removed from the service they also took them back they restored the lands of the farmers which was confiscated during cdm fine so they remitted the fines so they did every i mean they tried to correct every damage that was done to the british done to the british done by the britishers to the national movement and the nationalists taking back the government servants into job again restoring the lands remitting the fines removing the restrictions on organizations newspapers fine persons releasing the non violent political prisoners so all these things they did it gave a practical test of independence so people felt how the life would be without restriction because earlier you could not even chant vande mataram freely you could not even chant vande mataram freely because chanting vande mataram was sedition section 124a of ipc chanting vande mataram was sedition spreading disaffection against the state so now people got to know the value of independence how to live the life without restriction how how it will feel so and then <coughs> they undertook lot of welfare things so with regard to peasants they reduced the land rent there was something called as grazing fee also if you take your cattle to graze in the government land you have to pay the grazing fee fine there were uh, even if there was a slight delay 
in the payment of revenue. They used to impose the fines and penalties. They removed that. And uh, these zamindars, they used to exploit a lot of peasants and all. So, in many areas, they banned this begar. Begar, forced labor thing. Fine. And uh, they also set up a lot of committees to ensure the welfare of labors, minimum uh, wages, fixed working hours, fine, maternity benefits for women. So, a lot of measures for helping the labors as well and a lot of measures for helping the depressed classes, promotion of the education, propagating the, like what do you say, awareness against untouchability, providing scholarships, providing reservations. So, with regard to them, promoting the temple entry, so all these things were done. Okay, So, this government undertook a lot of welfare measures. They also opened a lot of schools in different areas. Varda scheme of education was implemented. Education along with life skill. Okay, Zaki Rusen, I told you, no? Yes, sir. So, Varda scheme of education was implemented all across the country. Education along with life skill. So, all these things were done by this 28-month ministry. So, this was a very famous experiment in the history of Indian freedom movement. When Congress got the power, it showed, it weakened the myth that Indians can't rule. Winston Churchill famously told, no, Indians are fit to be ruled, cannot rule. So now INC proved that we can also rule. We got an administrative experience. For the first time, the bureaucracy came under the control of Indians during this 28 month rule. And this, the greatest contribution of this was, it gave the practical test of independence to the people. So earlier, Freedom was just an imaginary thing to us. Now we tasted it. Now we know how it tastes. Now we want it more. The craving for the freedom increased. Therefore, during Quit India movement, you can see the upsurge in the participation of the masses. That scale, that intensity, that magnitude, it all was possible because of this 28 month government. Because people now know Swaraj is not an imaginary thing to them. They know what is Swaraj, how it feels. So, we will continue with this in tomorrow's class. But, no, no, listen, listen. Class is not over. <laughs> now we will go to revolutionaries. What's the time? 4. 10 minutes. One phase we will complete. One phase. What happened? Okay. We have another class. What time? 4.30, okay. Right on one small point, Indian Independence League, Indian Independence League, formed in 1927, no, 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 just write on, a random point, Indian Independence League, formed in 1927, as a pressure group within INC, as a pressure group within INC, as a pressure group within INC by Bose and Chacha. To demand Puna Swaraj. <coughs> to demand Puna Swaraj. Because Motil Nalaru was demanding what? Dominion status. These people wanted Pona Swaraj. So, for that, they formed this group, Indian Independence League. So, it was kind of a pressure group within INC. Okay. So, now let me tell you two more points and we will end this class. Second World War started, 3rd September, I mean, 1st September 1939. So, in meanwhile, I have told you about Lucknow session of INC, Faisal session of INC. And then uh, Haripura session of INC presided by Bose, National Planning Committee under the chairmanship of Chacha. And then Tripuri session, Tripuri session, the dispute between Gandhi and Bose, it came to the forefront. Gandhi did not want Bose to be the president. Therefore, uh, like he tried to convince Nehru, Nehru refused. He tried to convince Maulana Azad, he also refused. He tried to convince Pata, I mean he convinced Patavi Sitaramaya and he made him contest against the Bose. And Gandhi campaigned. For Patavi Sitaramaya, I told, he is my candidate. If you vote for him, it is like voting for me. So, it was a very clear situation within INC. Gandhi versus Bose. But in that fight, Bose won. But CWC was dominated by Gandhians. 
So, CWC is the topmost decision making body of INC. So, whatever decision taken by BOSS, it has to be approved by CWC. So, they are the working committee, they will implement. You can plan, you can decide, but implementation is by CWC. But that was dominated by Gandhians. So, again, the tussle continued Gandhi versus Bose. Finally, Bose wanted to, like his views and visions with regard to the future of India was different. So, Gandhi, you all know, the world war was looming in, the world war started. So, at that point of time, Gandhi's view with regard to Second World War, it was very simple unconditional support as a matter of duty and will not be launching any mass movement. Fine. Gandhi told, write down. India and the Second World War as the heading. India and the Second World War. See, if this was a demo, we would have given it for only one class. <laughs> this is not a demo. <laughs> okay. Somebody is asking online. So online anonymity, no? Don't ask anything. <laughs> if you wanted to give a glimpse of it, it would have been just like first hour of the class or one class. So when we are giving it like five, for four or five days, it means it's a complete course. Okay. So. So, Gandhi, support to, support to elite powers, support to elite powers, because justice is with them, justice is with them. Second point, unconditional support as a matter of duty. Unconditional support as a matter of duty. Third point, no mass movement till the end of the war. No mass movement till the end of the war. Next point, no external support. No external support or interference in Indian national movement. Okay. At the same time, Bose, I'll write on the opinion of Bose. Both elite and Axis powers are imperialist in nature. Both elite and Axis powers are imperialist in nature. Therefore, there is no question of justice or injustice. Therefore, there is no question of justice or injustice. Second point, no question to any, no question of support to any group. No question of support to any group because Britain's difficulty is India's opportunity. Britain's difficulty is India's opportunity. Next point immediate launch of mass movement, immediate launch of mass movement to attain independence. Immediate launch of mass movement to attain independence. Last point, seek the support of Axis powers. Seek the support of Axis powers if need arises. Seek the support of Axis powers if need arises. 
ओके नौ चाचा वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लीडर बोथ द ग्रुप्स आर इंपीरियलिस्ट बोथ द ग्रुप्स आर इंपीरियलिस्ट बट जस्टिस इज विथ अलीड पवर्स बोथ द ग्रुप्स आर इंपीरियलिस्ट बट जस्टिस इज विथ अलीड पवर्स नेक्स्ट पॉइंट कंडीशनल सपोर्ट टू ब्रिटिश कंडीशनल सपोर्ट टू ब्रिटिश नेक्स्ट पॉइंट नो मास मोमेंट टिल द एंड ऑफ द वॉर कंडीशनल सपोर्ट टू ब्रिटिश नो मास मोमेंट टिल द एंड ऑफ द वॉर ओके नेक्स्ट पॉइंट नेक्स्ट लाइन बोस वर्क टूवर्ड्स लॉन्चिंग ऑल इंडिया मास मोमेंट वर्क टूवर्ड्स लॉन्चिंग ऑल इंडिया मास मोमेंट इवन आफ्टर रिजाइनिंग as the president of inc and formed forward block as a pressure group within inc and formed forward block as a pressure group within inc to immediately launch a mass movement pressure group within inc to immediately launch a mass movement but when cwc questioned his authority when cwc questioned his authority he resigned from inc and launched forward block and launched forward block as a separate party launched forward block as a separate party okay so he was kept under house arrest he escaped through afghanistan he went to like uh, moscow and then to berlin <coughs> so that story is different and now uh, in india the masses they were attracted towards the appeal of bos so they started pressurizing inc to launch a mass movement they started pressurizing so at this point of time at this point of time inc conducted ramgarh session to tell the masses even we want to launch the mass movement but organization is not strong they gave these reasons as soon as our organization is strong enough we launch the moment till then we cannot launch who will decide whether the organization is strong enough or not gandhi and what is the stance of gandhi no mass movement so obviously understood that was their decision and they were sympathetic towards britishers britishers are good people they have democracy so they were sympathetic towards britishers therefore there was no chance of launching the mass movement the only strong leader who was proposing the launch of the mass movement was bos so britishers it was very clear who is the threat they arrested bos kept him under house arrest and now the masses they started pressurizing inc to launch the mass movement now inc started pressurizing britishers see we are not launching the mass movement we are stopping the masses also we are doing everything in our capacity to not to launch the mass movement but as what chacha told it will be a conditional support it will be a conditional support it's not like what gandhi told unconditional support no 
it is like what Chacha told. From now onwards, it will be conditional support. For which you have to showcase your commitment. You have to show what you are ready to give to us once the war is over. What you are committed to. You have to show your commitment. So to give us a list of promises that what you will fulfill after the war is over. At least we can show that to people and ask them to keep quiet. So because after the war, Britishers are going to give these things. So we can ask the masses to keep quiet. So now the ball was in the court of Britishers. They have to prove their commitment. They have to prove that they are willing to give some good things to India for our loyalty, for our support to them, for keeping quiet during the difficult times, for not launching the mass movement, for supporting them. They will pay us back for our loyalty. So now Britishers had to answer what they are ready to give. So for that, they gave something called as August offer, 1940, to prove their commitment to Indians for supporting them during the Second World War for not launching the mass movement for it was also a promise to make us keep quiet till the war is over so for that sake they gave something called as august offer of 1940 tomorrow we'll be discussing august offer krebs mission Webel plan cabinet mission together as one theme because one question from this theme almost every year it will come so we'll discuss this theme and then we'll also discuss about ina and other revolutionaries and we will reach independence and after independence I will brief you about this uh, tribal and uh, the peasant movements okay and if you want me to cover anything else like about any personality and all today is the last day for you to request that if you want me to like cover any personality or any event if you want me to talk about it if you want me to cover it in the class you can put in your request or pitch in your request through my, I mean, I have given you my telegram ID in the very beginning. You can ask the request. And if it is appropriate, I will do it in the class. If it is very simple, I will ask you to read. If it requires explanation, if it deserves to be discussed in the class, I will take it up. Okay. So now, today, after the class, you have one small assignment. You have to solve all the PYQs from these topics, whatever we have covered. The entire national movement, whatever we have covered till now, I want you to solve it with regard to sessions, with regard to educational committees, with regard to constitutional developments, with regard to the freedom movement till now, I want you to solve the questions. Fine? And if you have any doubts, please let me know tomorrow. Okay? Without solving, you will never be able to apply your knowledge. In exam, what matters is application part. Okay? So, thank you all. See you all tomorrow. Okay?